Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Tonight's podcast, uh, I, I know we're going to get into the shits. Obviously, you know, we're going to always do our thing, but uh, I actually needed to kind of use the night as like a little bit of a man moment and uh, kind of pull up with my bros and get perspective outside of myself because, you know, obviously I have one way of thinking of things, but it's always good to get them birds out of you from people that ain't in the situation to kind of let you know if you bugging or if there's something to it. So my topic for the night is, is a very personal one because this is something I'm actually going through. Um, and... It, I guess I start with a question and then I'll get into more specific questions. But the overarching question of, of my topic is like, does someone being your parent or elder automatically warrant you having to respect them? Now, now when I say that, it comes from a place of like, this is the situation, right? I got a parent that I know it's out of love. Like, I, I know the root of it, but the impact is when it comes to, like, me and my wife parenting my son, like, it's a lot of overstepping bounds and, like, giving unwarranted warranted opinions. Mm-hmm. And it comes across as disrespect. And I think the reason I feel disrespected by it is because it's hard. I'm doing this here just in case I got to go back and edit this out later, but (laughs) Uh it's hard to respect somebody when you don't feel like they're more successful. And I don't mean like respect them as a person. I mean like respect their opinion or their advice on things, especially if you, if it's unsolicited. It's hard to respect that if the person is not doing better than you in said field, or if you don't feel like they're more successful than you, or like, it's almost like, what are you teaching me? Like you're stepping in telling me stuff that doesn't help the situation in any shape or form. And then when I'm asking you to stop doing it because it's hurting my feelings, you're doubling down on it and telling me I'm being disrespectful because I'm asking you to stop doing that. So I, I guess it's like I, I'm more trying to figure out like I'm not tripping by saying like, hey, like stay in your lane as a grandparent. I love you as a grandparent. I think it's a wonderful thing. I loved you as a parent growing up. But I'm the parent now. Well, like been an idea with it too, and I've dealt with it for years because I've been dealing for 14 years. Um, from my perspective, is uh, I ain't gonna say a skewed perspective or a bias perspective, I'm just gonna give you straight out. Um, you right and you wrong, but you more right than you wrong, though. Um, you right because you are the parent, your whatever you choose to discipline should be respected in your household. That's that your child your discipline, your rules. You should be respected just as that. That's one thing. Um, On the other side, as a grandparent, um, to speak to where you said, how can I respect someone who's not doing better than me in in a said field? As grandparents, they're not speaking on, how can I say it? Most grandparents, when they're trying to give advice to their child who's a parent now, they're not giving parental advice. They're giving grand grandparent advice, seeing things through a different eyes because they see how they did things. And nine times out of ten, most kids are going to replicate some type of parenting that their parents did. We all going to change one or two things that we didn't like. But for, now, for, for the most part, our parenting skills come from what we learn as far as how we raise. Our parents see that. So just in my situation, um, I'm big on discipline. You feel me? Like, because I was raised big on discipline. And I, would, I, I wasn't allowed to do but so much. So I don't let my kids do so much. So when I go around my people's house, it's don't fuss at them for this. Let them do this. Let them do this. I'm like, no, it's something back. So I used to get real mad. Like, why are you going against what I'm saying? 
you ain't let me do that. Why is you? But then it took me a while to step back. I'm like, it's not you disrespecting me. It's just you doing your role as a grandparent. And it took me a while to see what that role was because I was so stuck in defining my own role and wanting everybody to see me in my role doing my thing. So I felt like by them giving the advice they were giving and saying things they were saying, they were not seeing me as a father in the role as a man that I stand as I, as I am. To me, I thought they were seeing me as a child still trying to play father. And that's why you were saying the things you say. It only came after certain conversations on different levels, many, many, many conversations, you feel me, and arguments, many. To me, like, don't, these are my kids. We know them your kids, but we're always going to say something because that's our grandkids. We just want the best of them. We're not saying what you're doing is wrong, but we're going to always have something to say. I understand to, to a certain point, but what I chose to do is separate myself to a certain instance because I was always, I just, all my kids were always at my, my, my people's house. You feel me? Like if I had to go somewhere, that was the babysitter. You feel me? So, excuse me, that was always that. But to a certain point, I was like, you know what? Let me separate myself for when, so I can stick in these boundary lines. So when I go over there now, it's not as much as nothing said. You feel me? When I come in there, as my kids doing something, sit down. Don't do this. My mother still may look at me if, because, how can I say it? We all know our personal flaws. My personal flaw is I, I have a habit of talking aggressive and I don't know it. My mother knows this. So when I'm talking to my kids, she'll key in on me how I talk. You feel me? Because she doesn't want what happened to me through her parenting for me to do the same thing to my kids. She wants me to have an open, open way of communication with my kids, which me and my mother didn't have until I was an adult. I mean, so that's why she says don't do that a certain way because she doesn't want to see the exact same thing that happened to her child, happened to her grandkids because she was she was the the reason behind my issue. You feel me? She don't want to be no way in relation to the issues behind her grandkids too. So she do what she do now to try to prevent or try to help me correct. But it's hard for a parent to try to parent their kids who are parents, because regardless of how old we are, ever are, we can still be our, our parents' children. So they all will always have the right to tell us something because we will never be as old as our parents, you feel me? But it's a thin, it's a real thin, thin line there when it comes to respect, because as you say, get to arguing. We all know I get to argue with my grandmother tooth and nail. And that comes with a, a, a thin respect line because when it comes to you saying something or giving me over advice when it comes to my children, if that's not what I want to do, if that's not the advice I want to follow, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stand on that hill. And that's just that. That's just the hill I'm going to stand on. Um, but once again, that's just me personally. Um, other people take it differently. Some people see the conversation I have. My, you have my grandmother is being disrespectful because at the end of the day, if I feel like I'm disrespected, I'm going to give it tenfold regardless of who it is. And once again, that's how I was raised by my mother. I was never told that I was never raised to hold my tongue. You feel me? Like, so all these lessons come straight for her. But at the end of the day, she won't raise like that. She raised me counter to how she was raised. But I'm not raising my kids counter to how I was raised. So that's why my mother says certain things because at a certain point, yeah, I do have flaws that she, my mother sees in me that she wishes that her as a parent would have did something different. So, it would have been a certain outcome, but we are all projects of, or, or not, kind of, not projects, but we are all the outcome of our lives. Our lives, tra traumas, dramas, and everything we go through. Who we as adults is it, it, that summed up in one. Um, that kid topic is real. It's it's real. It's a real touchy topic because every parent wants to do their best. And our best is what we each individually think our best is. So we set things in our household how we see them fit. Our household is different than our parents' household was and and is because we're not their age. You remember? We don't have that experience they have. We each individually want to ride our lives and make our own mistakes. But as we all know growing up, our parents want to hinder us, not even hinder us, our parents want don't want us to make certain mistakes. All right, but, that's, that's the that's the part right there that you just hit on, like the part about 
our parents are not, our households are not our parents' household. In my mm-hmm. particular situation, my household is completely different than the way I was mm-hmm. raised. I was raised a lot of my main childhood years by my grandparents. So there's a huge chunk of life lessons and learnings that didn't come from my direct parent. It came from a grandparent. So there's already a disconnect in how my, my son's experience, where my son's experience is in that. But two, I grew up in a single parent household. There's a different dynamic there between a mother and their son and a mother and father in a nuclear family with their son. That's a whole different dynamic. It's a different level of of pressures on each person. There's a different dynamic in what the child sees. There's a different dynamic in how you can interact with that child because there's a different balance in the household. Like there's a whole lot of differences. Not saying one is better or worse, but it's different. So for me, I guess I look at it like, I respect you as my mother. If you're giving me advice as a human being and I feel like I can apply it to my life, cool. But if you're questioning my parenting. That's what I got to draw. And for me, I'm looking at it like at that point, that's where you're overstepping the bounds of being a grandparent or even my parent. You're now meddling in my household. And the diff- and another difference even with uh-huh. like, you, like at least what you face, like you were taking your kids to your grandparents' house and your parents' house on a regular basis. So it was a closer connection between them, your your family, and everything kind of was more of a dynamic together. My mom lives hundreds of miles away. So yeah. you're meddling in a household that you don't even understand the day-to-day dynamics of because you're not here to witness it. So you're speaking out a turn on something that you may not even have the full story on. So now you're, di- you're coming across disrespectful because you're now like, but you don't even understand the full context. Then when you're explaining the full context, there's no adulting of like, okay, I'm in, I'm the parent here. So since I kind of overstep and I'm now being given the full context, most adults would say, oh, all right, I got you. My bad. I, I shouldn't have came out. It's, it's not even an acknowledgement of the fact that I'm now letting you know that you <coughs> only hurt my feelings because you overstepped the bounds and kind of like questioned my parenting, but then you did it without any of the full context. So you're doing it with partial information. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And, and then when I come to you as a son, not as a anything, but hey, mom, you're hurting your son when you say and do these things. You then immediately say, no, I didn't do that. You're wrong. You're being disrespectful. You can't tell me what to say. I'm asking you. But that that also goes back. (laughs) Then does the parent gene kick in? Like My son said, daddy, I remember it clear as day. And to this day, I live by it every day. And I make sure like, I really have a calm tone with him. Because at two years old, he said, daddy, when you yell at me, it scared me. I don't need to hear nothing else. I don't need to argue with you and say, well, it's not really yelling. Mm-hmm. I can raise my voice. Like, I ain't got no time to go back and forth with opinion. I'm your dad. I'm hurting you. Let me stop hurting you. Let me acknowledge you as, as my child. Let me have that compassion. Whereas, and, and that's the part, I guess, for me that like makes it hard for me to then respect your opinion even more. Because now it's like, you don't even acknowledge me as your son, but you're telling me I'm disrespectful for simply asking you to not do something that is causing harm. I don't know where to go with that sometimes. And like, I I honestly feel you as a grandparent, I get it. They want to say something. I feel you. Okay. Then say that directly to me, not in snide comments under like, you know, in in passing, like under little underhanded little jabs or not in comments toward to my wife that then I end up, oh, let me see your phone. Oh, you was talking to mom. What y'all talking about? She said, what? Uh, right, let me say, let me, let me ask you a question. You know, the wife be kicking and she don't even, she be oblivious to the shit. But I'm peeping mm-hmm. 
to me, you're it's hurting me. It's bothering mm-hmm. me. I hear you, you question. That comments. Like, don't do that type of stuff. And I'm telling you specifically, not everything you do. Don't stop being a great grandparent. Don't, don't stop being my mom. If I ask for advice, please give it. But stop doing those things because those things are hurting. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that I'm disrespectful for telling you that. Where, where do I go with that as a child? Let me ask you a question. Sure. To just not even, I ain't gonna even say play devil advocate. Just ask your question, just get deeper in it. Sure. Do you think that was done to your parent by your I, grandparent? Absolutely. But that's my problem. So do, you, so do you think it's instead of her really but, understanding that she does it, do you think it was a learned behavior and she thinks that's what's supposed to be done? Stop. No. So, so, so that's a great question. The reason I, okay, I do think that it's a learned behavior. I do know for a fact it was done to her. But where I stop at saying that it's something that she thinks is okay is she's verbally said, no, that's not okay. She shouldn't have done that. Well, if you know this, and I'm now telling you, you are replicating a mistake. That's not, that, that the difference between me and you is, I'm a, I'm wired different. I've been through different things in my life and I'm also a man. So I have the ability to disconnect from things emotionally and see them from the big picture. Mm -hmm. You're hurting me and pushing me away and it's going to damage relationships that I don't want to be damaged outside of myself. Stop it. Now, another question. Like Now... I see you said you pointed out to her that she's doing it. Have you pinpointed direct to her? You're doing the same thing to me that was done to you verbally, like straight up. Mm-hmm. Tonight. And you know what she said? Mm-hmm. I don't care. Because I, I got I can say what I want to say. <laughs> oh, she shit. Don't talk to me like that. Okay. <clears throat> Like it's 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 one of them things where our, our older generation on the fuck is like, all right, I hear you saying I'm hurting you, so let me make sure I double down and give you a little more hurt on top of that, cause you ain't get enough yet. Let me get let me give you the bonus round. Hold up, call in the trucks, bring it bring it in, <laughs> and, and it's like, so then I be thinking I'm tripping, right? So then I'll bring it to like mm. another family member who I have the same issue with. I bring it to her and tell her stop, right? So obviously, you know, that family member, they talk because they we, we family, you know how family do it. They gonna, they gonna talk. Whole different vibe though. I got you. I understand. I, I, I ain't, this is where I was coming from when I said what I said, but I understand how that could be her. I got you. You ain't gotta work out there for me. And I, I, I know about the other thing and da, 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 and then, how does everybody else at least acknowledge? Even if they say something, I ain't mad at you for, you ain't gotta agree. But my thing is where as a adult first, parent even more, where is the acknowledgement of, uh, there's a hurt party bringing an issue to you. Most people, just cordial people, not even people that are familial in relationship that I at least experience in my day-to-day life, and maybe I'm just experiencing good people or something. Maybe I'm tripping. But most people would at least be like, all right, I, I understand how you feel that way. My bad. But let me at least give you more context. Something else, even if they disagree, they'll at least acknowledge the fact yeah. that, hey, man, I ain't trying to hurt you. You feel me? Not get mad at you for bringing it to them. Like, it's, it's, like, it's a... And it's like the root oh, from, from like I'm loving you through a lot of these type of situations. And as an adult, like as a child, there was a lot of things that I could not say or sometimes didn't even see. But as an adult, you look back on your life with adult lenses now, not child blind. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things that I see now that I'm a parent. Uh, now that I'm the head of a household, now that I like I understand how adulting works. It would be the, 
this is how I honestly look at it. And maybe I'm wrong. And and face, you know, you definitely close to the situation. So you could definitely tell me if I'm <laughs> The way I look at it is, you're not qualified to give some of the, to say some of the things you're saying because you didn't get it right. Like, I, I, well. and, and for me, most most kids look up to their parents in some way. I don't necessarily have that same experience. Yeah. There are adults in my life that I look up to. Like I looked up to my great granny. She was a hero to me. I don't necessarily have that experience with my parents. I have a great love and respect for them. I have an admiration for them for, well, my, for my mom, obviously. You know, she was both. But, you know, for the, 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 the sacrifices she made, but I'm also able to be, from an analytical standpoint, as a parent, like there's things that I don't feel that I can really take advice from you on because I, I don't know that you figured it out. So I, I don't I don't really know that we, like, there are certain things that, yes, I'm gonna ask for advice on because there's certain things I feel like you're more than qualified to tackle, but in certain arenas, like, that, that may not be, it's different. Like, you didn't yeah. have this experience, so I, I don't know that you can even speak on it because you don't have the same, like, we don't have the same parent experience. If I was a single parent and I was going through the same type of thing, it, there may be more similarities where you could, like, really step in and, like, give me, like, the rundown of how shit, but really different. So I, I don't know, like, you're, you're saying stuff that don't even apply or that just comes across as, like, judgy? Uh -huh. I would do that well, obviously, because you didn't have that resource, or that wasn't afforded to you, or that wasn't something that you maybe thought of. But we can do that. So that will, you know, like, it, I don't know. And face, this is where I'm done and I'm complete, and you tell me, "Tears, you're fucking bugging out." Unless I lost, bro. Faith. Well, Pat, am I bugging out? No, no, you ain't bugging out. Um, where on oh, one thing where you said um, you don't feel comfortable taking advice from certain people because you don't feel that they got it all right. Me personally, I don't think no parent, especially if you uh, a parent and you only have one child, I don't think you'll get it right that they, they, they go around. I don't think you're going to get everything right going that go around, but I feel as your child becomes an adult and that child has children, you see the flaws because you know the flaws you made now because your child's grown and you know what you would have did, should have did. Um, I feel that a lot of grandparents, when they see their children doing the exact same thing as they did, they think that they're going to have the same outcome. So they speak up or speak out but they don't know the veracity of what goes on 24 seven in that household. So you may see a similar action that you did, but the outcome does not have to be similar. So at the end of the day, let me rock and let me ride as a parent to learn my lessons the same way you learned yours. Uh, I appreciate the advice that you offer, but at the same time, give me the respect to not have to take your advice. Um, because at the point where you're upset, where I don't take your advice, you don't see me as an equal. Um, and that's the hardest thing for parents to do um, when, you're, when your kids become an adult, is to see your children as an equal, because I may not be an equal as an age, but I'm an equal as an adult. So now I deserve the same respect as an adult, as long as I'm handling my business as an adult, um, I care myself as an adult, and I'm the depending on myself as an adult, I should be respected as an adult. Um, when I'm doing my job as a father, I should be respected as that, a father. Or if, uh, and, and the, on the other hand, a mother doing her job, respected as a mother. Um, once again, no one can dictate what goes on in somebody else's household. Everyone will always have their opinions. And like I always say, opinions like assholes. Everyone has them and most of them stink. Um, but when it comes to this grandparent, parent, grand, grandkid thing, 
I feel that that situation has probably been, especially, I feel it's a lot deeper in the black community and then outside of other communities. Um, other cultures, they have like, um, I see more of a all-inclusive family where they got everybody living in the household, you know, and everybody follows like, grandma says this, so mama, daddy, and, and you can make everybody doing the same thing. You can like, it's like the culture is set different. But I feel like in our culture, as African Americans here, we don't have that. If I'm like we, we were some, we were taken away from that type of culture. So we all individually strive for that independence, that strength to be able. I right, this is my household. This is mine because we all want something of our own. You feel me? Because we historically haven't had that. The only thing we had was our own families. So I feel like each individual of us wants to grab on their own families. But as we do that subconsciously the grandparents feel like they're being pushed off or they're not part of that but we know we're not pushing them out we know you you are a part of the family like i'm a part of your family so of course you're part of my family but i'm the head of this family right here you feel me? and the rules i set for my as the head of mine gotta be respected i'm not gonna disrespect your rules as you the head in your household so don't respect mine as a head of mine, I feel like that's a real big thing, a real mis- miscommunication between just in the black African American African American community between the generations. Um, just me, I'm the, I'm the seventh generation. Um, yeah, I'm still the seventh generation currently living in my family right now. So the older generations, you feel like they was raised a certain way, and you see the difference as in each generation, how they was raised, and there's just the different respect levels and how people do different stuff. But the one thing is constant, I've always seen is whoever the grandparent is may say something or they may or they say something to a certain if, if, but they always got at least something to say. Um, I've never met a grandparent or come in contact with a grandparent or been related to anybody that was an aunt that is a grandparent that have us never said anything. But the basis of the whole thing is you can't cross that thin boundary line of Give it advice and disrespect it because you can give advice, cool, but you can also give advice and be disrespectful with it too. Um, whatever my rule is, don't don't scoff at my rule because it's not your rule. I see something in my household to make this rule, so just respect that and give me the respect on top of that as being a man to set a rule because you have a lot of men in households who don't have the gumption to set a rule in their household. They let their household slide, don't give a fuck about their household. So as a man, if I'm a as strong a man to stand on my to be a father, be in my household and set standards and boundaries in my household, all the respect I deserve. That's it. And I feel that in your situation, it's the the main thing is as you said, you spoke directly to it and you felt hurt because you spoke not as a parent in that situation, but you spoke to a parent as the child in the instance of how you were feeling. And the response was nowhere where you were expecting that. But that still went back to violate the respect level that you as an adult and as a parent. So it's a real funny situation and about a lot of thin lines, right? Because you have one person who you know wholeheartedly, nine out of ten, won't change, won't change their ways. You feel <laughs> like, and you know the type of parent you are going to be, and you aspire to be, even because you know what you want for your child. But what the grandparent has realized is what they want for their grandkids will never trump what the parent wants for their child. Exactly. I know every grandparent wants the best of their child, but no grandparent wants better for the grandchild than the parent wants for the child. Amen. No, and, in that, okay. um, and in that same saying, go ahead. I was going to ask a question and, I, and I'm going to lead this question and then I'm going to uh, let y'all speak on it, speak your piece and then uh I'll go ahead into the show uh, proper. But um, at what point does it become disrespect if you've told somebody, like, all right, somebody's giving advice, right? Mm-hmm. Got it. Everybody got opinions. Grandparents always got advice. 
if you ask the grandparent nicely to not give that advice anymore, it's not welcome and it's not landing in a nice way. Please stop. At what point is it just now you're just disrespecting if you continue to keep doing the same thing? Because this is not conversation. Like I'm bringing it to the conversation because this happened tonight, but this is a conversation that's happened at least five or six times. Then it comes, then it comes to the, the, the tough decision that mm, no child wants to make. Um, no child that has a good relationship with their parent um, that I've had to make too. You got to come to the sense where, where some shit going to have to be cut back then. No matter time or by the visit, something going to have to be cut back till you see that the respect level I'm being given because it, I, this is my own, my personal feeling is as far as interaction with people. If it's two people in a situation, you feel me? And it's karma, it, it, it's drama there and it's arguing or whatever. One person approaches the other and lets them know how they feel. If that other person fails to or does not want to acknowledge that or change, the only thing that can be changed in that situation is the person who's already acknowledged what's going on. That person has to remove themselves from the situation because the only way for a situation to change is two people in the situation that have to be willing to change. No situation involving two can be changed by one. It takes two. So if two can't see the issue, the issue won't be ever present as long as it's time or space for the issue to live in. You have to subtract that time from that issue, painful as it may be. Because I've had, like I said, I've had to do the same thing, and it's a hard, it's a hard, big ass hard cookie to bite off, big hard cookie to swallow. But at the end of the day, it's the best. That time that separated, it comes back tenfold once that once it's seen on the other end. So it, 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 it's slow but sure for them to see it. But the conversation goes about. I ain't talked to you in a while. I ain't. Just, I know this is why. Oh. You really meant, yeah, I really, that's how I really felt and I really meant that. And I'm going to stand on that as an adult, as a grown man, for you to see that because I have to do this adult shit with you too. I can't do the normal shit I would do just with my parent with you because at this, in, in this instance, I'm speaking to you as a parent on my own and not your child. So I got to do what I got to do. Same thing I would do with somebody else, respectfully. I got to respectfully separate myself for a certain distance with you too for you to see why you feel me? Sometimes that distance helps the other person ask why there's a void there. If there's no void, there's nothing to think about. It's only constant headbutt, 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 headbutt. Um, that's what I choose to do with my life, and me personally, it it it, it takes away my personal stress because I don't have to think about that BS constantly happening, or or the stress or the anxiety of going through the situation, knowing what's going to happen, and I'm gonna have to deal with the situation when I know I've already spoken, and I know I don't want to deal with it, and I know I shouldn't have to deal with it. That just builds up, and it just builds up a lot of stress and anxiety, and me have muscles be all tight, back be all messed up, back spasms for no reason, but I know where it comes from. So I decided just to take the the best effort on my own and, and and love me more. You feel me? Like, sure, I love my parents, but I I have to love me more in that situation. And if the love that is said that is there for me is there, when you see what I'm not giving back, you you understand it. Sometimes some things that are not said are better understood than I said. But like I said, nothing. Nothing ain't easy in this situation. N nothing at all because of how close it is. And if it was a motherfucker like, oh, you my aunt, you saying shit, I ain't talking to you. Hold on, you my aunt. But when it comes to a direct parent, that's always a difficulty, especially when you had uh, a somewhat good relationship growing up with a parent. If you, ain't, if you had a parent that won't shit growing up, there, you know, fuck what you say. I ain't going to listen. You won't dare me growing up. I ain't going to listen to you now. <laughs> What's the point? But that, that ain't the total case, so. I say it's a funny, tough situation, but putting that, I feel like putting that distance there, putting that that little amount of distance there, or subtracting that, it'll it'll open eyes to a certain extent. Because at the end of the day, no one's getting hurt in the situation. It's just alleviating a situation that don't need to be there because my words aren't helping you see what you're doing. So my actions have to see it, and I'm not gonna disrespect you. But my actions will be respected. So. For real. Let me give you something to think about, Pat. You got any words? Uh, 
before I uh, kick it off? Um, I was really into it. Um, a lot of, I have a certain relative uh, or whatever that you're just not going to be able to get through to them, whatever, sometimes whatever and my brother being that he got kids he actually went through the same thing a little bit with you too like like you did too but when i i think when me and him talked about it i was like sometimes or whatever you know sometimes people are just human after a while and sometimes the titles actually get in the way and a lot of times when people actually disrespect they don't think they're in the wrong. So they don't even realize they're disrespecting. A lot mm, of the time. Mm, mm. You got a good one right there, like, babe. Just let me think go. As adults, as new adults, because I feel like in our 30s, we we still are new adults because for 21 years mm. you're a child. So I've been an adult for what, 17 years and, and 19 years. So I'm about to be a grown adult in a few more years. <laughs> so I mean for a full five years. For that's why I look at this shit. That's why I look at this shit. But I feel that for for the older generation and the younger generation, it will always be some type of like clash continually. You feel mm-hmm. like when mm-hmm. our parents a little bit when I because it has to happen when our parents are gone and we're there and we're the grandparents. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's still gonna be some clash that even though we've dealt with our shit. And we having this podcast now. We talking about our parents saying some, 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 whatever, whatever. I feel like in a certain instance, we're gonna do something like that to our kids too. But we're gonna be conscious of this type of stuff. So it won't be this type of stuff we do. It'll be something that annoys them or they feel is disrespectful. So I feel, I mean, I feel like it's a like constant through history and through time, and it will always be ever presently there, just, just through the generation. But I just hope that. As time goes, the communication level through the de- through the generations gets better, so it won't be a that time or that distance. So much won't have to be wasted with negativity, you feel me? Bickering between it, between them, you feel me? Like it'll be more well accepted or or more adjusted to it. It can be a way where communication won't be as harsh or as harshly taken or as harshly seen, because mm-hmm. me personally. If you're, if, I don't care who you is, if you say anything about anything remotely to parenting, instantly I'm automatically gonna take it to the left. Cause personally, I'm automatically thinking you saying something about me not doing something with my kids. That's just instantly, just cause it's a, the type, type of parent I am. If I'm, I'm just overprotective with my kids and I'm all, always thinking, okay, I wanna be the best, I wanna do the best for my kids. So I'm always striving to do something greater or, or be a better father than I am. My, I'm my own competition, so I don't compete against somebody else. But I just feel like regardless of who you are, if you ever say something about what I'm doing, this all automatically, I, I perceive it automatically negative. But I don't know if we've been, I've personally been conditioned to things that, or what, but it only comes through time of me thinking of whatever going through whatever kind of situations, conversations that come to the future. But I feel like just throughout the generations, and presently now, more communication on a person to person and real basis needs to be had. You always have the older generation telling us stories and giving us life advice, but talk to us on a day-to-day basis to get to know the real person so you can understand what's going on now. Our households are the same households back in the 90s and the 80s and 70s and none of them times, you know I me. Mean? How we was raised and the same way you was raised. Technology actually changes parenthood. It changes what you can do, can't do. It, it opens up restrictions and tightens up other restrictions. So me personally, I would want, want these other gen- these older generations as time go by and we become an older generations, let's always keep this open line of communications with the younger generations, our kids, their kids, kids. They, and so we can all have the good communication that we need. So stuff won't be seen, we won't be seen as overstepping any boundaries. We'll, we'll be able to have a clear cut boundary between us and our kids. Okay, dad, cool, I, I, I don't mind you saying this and this and this, but when it comes to this, Please don't say this and this. Cool, no problem. I understand that that's your boundary. Like like the same boundaries you have with friends. You feel me? We had we had whatever meeting we had, we set our boundaries. Same things with kids. You feel me? Like, but I feel a lot of people are scared to have certain conversations with their parents. But at the end of the day, we gotta realize that they adults too. We adults too. We just gotta have an adult conversation with a parent. Just get them out of the view of a parent. 
most people live dual roles. You're my parent now, but you're my equal now as well. And then we're we're closer. We could be more friends now because we have more in common as adults. Yep. When I was growing up as a kid, we couldn't be but so close. Yep. I feel like get the communication, get the boundaries. Remember, like grandparents, stop seeing your kids as kids. See your kids as adults and parents as they are. You feel me? You have a deeper appreciation for what they're able to do and what they're doing with their family. You have a deeper and better respect for them when you see them in their life. But as long as you see them as just kids, you really can't appreciate what they're doing. Because you always have some judgment to say. You always have a critique to say. Because that's what we do with our kids. We're always trying to tell our kids, don't do this, do this, do this. Because we see them as kids. But as soon as they're adults and we see them in their own right, a lot of that, don't do this, don't do this, it automatically fades away. Because what other adults are we telling, don't do this, do this, don't do this? Nobody. We don't. We don't see that. We only see that that's done to kids. See us in the light we are. Give us our room to fly and we will fly. But as long as you're holding our wings down, we can't go nowhere. You're stifling the growth. Allow us to grow and we can. But if you don't, we won't. Humans are humans. So recognize that just like others can be wrong, so can yourself. And if you have self-awareness, I think that helps a lot because it solves a lot of these problems because then it's not a weird conversation. It's just a, hey, I made a mistake. Let me see how I can move on from it as opposed to, nope, I'm right about everything. But Be- before I forget, I, got some I also think do as far as different ways to approach it. And I definitely got some soul searching to do on it. But uh, go ahead, Patrick. I was... I was going to say, I think it's also every parent's fear that one of one of every parent's fear that one day their kid is going to call them out on their shit or whatever, and they never respond to it. Like they don't know how they're going to respond to it. I think that would be one of my parent, one of my fears as a parent. Not like a lingering fear, but I think when it actually happens, no parents is ever ever like oh like uh, ready for it you know no they're they not ready for it they're not hurts, making an excuse hurts. for it it, it hurts yeah, some parents when you bring, excuse up, you bring the show comers mm-hmm. it hurts when you bring the show comers but i mean bringing their short comers in light it only hurts them because they know you recognize it you mm-hmm. recognize their shortcomings mm-hmm. as an adult that's why it hurts it doesn't hurt for you them to bring it up because they probably talked about it with most their friends jokingly. But once the child or that person's child who is an adult now recognizes, hey, I realized when I was a child this happened and they didn't have a good outcome. That's how I feel about this. Why was it? Well, I ain't had this, this, and this, and this, and it's automatically defense, automatically defense. Even because that grandparent is still an attack. I ain't attacking you. I'm bringing you a situation that hurt me, and I want to have a better understanding now that my mind is prepared to have a better understanding. But at the same instance, we got to understand that person's mind may not be ready for explanation. They not they may not still be at that point, even though they're older. They still may not be at the point where they can verbally explain, "But well, this where I was at back then. This is why this." Or they may be so messed up by their decisions that they don't even know how to fathom to talk about the bad decisions. I mean, I know personally, if I'm like, I know what I've been through growing up, but I know some things that my people ignore and act like never fucking happened. So that's like some things I've told my wife just about me growing up and she's going back to my people's in, in conversation. My wife thought I was lying about this shit. I was like, why the fuck would I lie about that type of shit? <laughs> I'm like, well, they, they act like never. Well, I don't even fuck with nobody else. I know what the fuck I've been through. I ain't imagining shit. Even I'm gonna tell you my, my my real personal experience because I'm proud of everything I've been through. Nothing I've been through in my life I have a regret about because it's built the man I am. I wouldn't be the type of man I am if I didn't go through the the, the tragedies and downfalls and traumas I went through as a child, you feel me, or as a teenager, as a young man. I, I I take all those life lessons to heart because if I had not had them, Lord knows where I would be. I'd probably be in jail if I if I ain't had the type of childhood I had. Because who knows what the decisions I would have made as a young man if I didn't go through certain bullshit. If I had a total, look, like my thing is, look at these affluent people who don't go through nothing in life 
and they get uh, the adults and make these stupid ass crimes and they go murder people because they don't know. Well, I didn't know that was wrong. Motherfucker, I know what's wrong because I know what the fuck happened. <laughs> fuck, I've been through hell and high water. I know I, I know the bad decisions where if this is, if this adult makes this bad decision, where it can lead the family. So I know what to do as an adult in my shoes. I don't look at everything my parent did as bad because her mess ups gave me the advice of what to not to do. So even then, was she thinking, well, I was a bad parent then. No, your mistakes helped me learn. So that was good for me. You, me? you may feel this bad, but in the end, it had a benefit on me because I know how to move better now because I was key to see that. You feel me? Um, that's just me personal experience. Y'all don't get me talking, man. Go, let's go get it. <laughs> Well, you know what? I I wish my um I wish my real dad. Uh, I wish he <laughs> didn't care about like telling the truth because he come in ready, telling me exactly what the fuck he fucked up at. Like, well, let me tell you, son, I, I fucked up here and I fucked up here. <laughs> but, I did these drugs but, and this. I like that. <laughs> but what about what what I can say about him? He's the tell master me, of self awareness. But you, but you gotta appreciate that because he's the master of self awareness. You feel me? Like he's so aware with himself that he ain't got no problem. Look, I fucked up here. I fucked up here. I ain't telling you what to do, but I'm just telling you how I fucked up my shit. You see me now, so I fucked up this. And a person who can acknowledge their bad decisions and openly speak about their bad decisions, that's a person with a lot of wisdom and who's grown throughout their life. You feel me? Anybody who stays stagnant in life, they can't talk. They really have a hard time to talk about bad decisions they made because they can't believe they made them. They can't. They stick. Not probably getting over. It. But a person who can willingly talk about their bad decisions, what they went through, how they overcame them, and where they at now, I fuck with that shit because you you just showed me your wisdom that you've gained through your situation and your growth that you've been through and where you come at. I fuck with that shit. I I I definitely agree. And I like the transparency that your pops got with you. Like it can be overwhelming, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> like at least you're then able to have the very time. much so. And I feel like that's one thing I try to do with my son. Like I give him space to like, hey, all right, yeah, you did this and I've corrected you on this. What did daddy do wrong in this situation? How could I have done this better? Like, how do you feel about what I did? Like and give him the space to tell me, hey, man, I ain't like when you did that. That won't cool, daddy. That hurt my feelings, daddy. Yeah. Like, so then I'm also, like, giving him space to, like, like, acknowledge, like, yeah, I'm not perfect, too. Like, I can fuck up. Tell me how I can get better as a dad the same way I'm telling you how to be a better person as a, as a son. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't no one-way street where I just think, oh, I'm... Everything I'm doing is great. No, like I, I recognize that like, yeah, I'm going to fuck up. True. Everybody gonna fuck up. But I think that's my biggest wish for this situation and for all situations like between generations is like the self-awareness to know like, yo, just because you doing it don't make it right. Just acknowledge that you made a mistake and move on instead of doubling down on it. And that's, that's, that's where the self-awareness piece come in. Like you got to actually realize that like, and recognize I'm capable of making a mistake. I'm capable of hurting somebody else. I'm not infallible. Let me take a look at myself real quick and see what, what would make this person come and say this to me. This is a person that I love and who loves me. Let me at least hear it out. And, and maybe they saying something like, and I think that's where adults got to get to in general, but you know, that's a whole nother topic, but I definitely think we can revisit this conversation. Mm -hmm. I think, I think this one got left, got some different, some different angles we can all take on it. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, this conversation got legs on it, man. Yeah. Yeah. But one thing I do want to say, one thing I do want to say just personally, when you were speaking on your, on your, on you and your son and you giving him room to speak on his feelings, that's one thing I got to get better on because I'm big with telling my kids, I don't give a fuck about your feelings because everybody else going to fuck about your feelings. But I had to go, I go back and tell them that I'm not directly saying, I don't care about how you feel. What I'm trying to condition you to understand is being so hyper emotional. When you leave my house, no one else in the world is going to give you the care and sensitivity that you're going to see in the house. So I want you to be prepared uh -huh. to understand that ain't nobody going to care about you for if you're crying or not once you're outside or somebody says something bad to you. They don't care. 
and you have to protect your feelings more. So daddy telling you, I'm no, me not telling, telling, I'm not telling you, I don't care about your feelings or how you feel. I'm not caring about them tears or what you're trying to do with them tears because I know you're trying to draw sympathy out and you're not going to receive sympathy. Mm-hmm. Empathy and sympathy is when I try to drive into my kids and help them understand. It's one thing to understand how you feel and me like, okay, I understand how you feel. But it's one thing for you try to draw sympathy and like, oh, poor baby, oh, it's going to be all right. I hurt your feelings, oh. No, okay, I hurt your feelings. What did I say? Yeah. Okay. Why did I say this? Oh, you said this because I was doing this. Okay, so I hurt your feelings by correcting your bad behavior. See, I have I try to do it more of a get them to pull their understanding out of them. If him, but the way you do it, I I appreciate it because he had it gives him room to stand on his own, stand in his own, and verbalize. Well, this is how I feel about your action here, here, here. I really dig that. I think it it really like you you keyed in on it when you were basically saying what you're doing. Like the end the end goal of that space is to have the conversation. Like. Just because he says that something hurt his feelings or something ain't necessarily going to make me change what I did. But yeah. here's a behavior that we can talk about that I'm doing that is causing harm. And, and it makes sense. Like, yeah, like when he brought the yelling thing to me, like, that's right. Like, I, I go through my whole day every day and, and I'm not yelling at folks. Why am I yelling at you? Just because you did something that a human does make a mistake. Like, it, it, yeah. it's not it, it's not correcting your behavior so why am i doing it like and I, i'm big on that like i'm all about discipline but if i'm doing something that ain't actually correcting the behavior and it's causing harm then let's talk about it but it also yeah. had a conversation of if you coming at me with some bullshit about oh well because you told me that my room was messy well son look at your room you know what I'm saying? It allows him to start to make those differentiations and have those mm-hmm. follow-up conversations, which is the end goal. So I think that like, I don't necessarily know that your approach is necessarily wrong or nothing. I think it, it, if that fits with like how your kids respond, then I think that's fine. Cause the end result is the follow-up conversation of like the having them process through the differentiation of like, this is a feeling like this is an appropriate reaction to this situation. Whereas this is something that I'm, I'm trying to manipulate emotion. So, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, that's the end goal. So, I, I mean, if, if what you're doing is working, I wouldn't say, you know, like, again, like, basically with parenting, like, you know, it, it's figuring out what works in your household because you're you're going to be the best assessor of, like, this is the exactly. dynamic of my household. This is how my children operate on, off, when they're in front of people, when they're not. Like, you you know the dynamic of what works best. And then it's about just tweaking it as you go to keep tailoring it to really fit your kid so like yeah you know um, I, I i'll take the cool just, thing, but, you know, at the end of the day i think that if you're getting to the same end result which is that conversation of like this is what you're feeling let's talk about why you feel this way and let's analyze the situation and see like all right this feeling first of all is it appropriate for the situation second of all why do you feel this way? Let's analyze the why behind it so we can actually get to the root and let's find a solution going forward. You know what I mean? So sad though. I thought I was bugging. Is your chair lighting up, me? Yeah, my chair lights up. Okay, I thought I was bugging. Like, is this nigga got something hanging from his head? He, and he, lighting up and he shit? gave us a text. <laughs> he gave us a text to let us know it's gonna light up. Chair lights up, vibrate. I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about about this shit. Subwoofer in the seat. It's a whole deal. Yeah. Yeah. Next time you come, I'm gonna have to let you uh, get a massage. Like you can just play your favorite song and just let the so we'll... go ahead with your bad self. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead with your bad dad self. So. Wife is pretty pissed at the chair right now. She feels like I'm cheating on. Her. <laughs> 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 Shit. That chair you pay you pay good money for that chair there. Uh it's got it's that, that coin tonight with the opening topic, but um I know, I know. Seriously. But let's get to the real part of the show, man. What's up, guys? Welcome to the partners. A show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I am your boy, one-third of the partners, 
your boy Tiz, and I'm along with. It's the other third of the partners. It's the Padawan here, and I am along with. What's up, man? It's your boy facing the place somewhere in the race. Don't know what's going on, but I'm all in your face. What's happening? Hey. If y'all been listening already, uh, y'all know we now give y'all a little sneak peek behind the curtain on our opening conversations. Uh, y'all know how I'm doing this week. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonky one for me. Uh, have been doing real good with anxiety, but today it's a little bit higher just because uh, when the parental start tripping it, it always throw y'all off as a child, you know, as a child of a parent. So, yeah, but uh, otherwise, you know, life is good outside of that one thing. I tell you, like, life is really good. Uh, work going well. The fam doing well. My young man just kicked butt at uh did his little black history presentation. He dressed up like Matthew Henson. And uh, they had like this wax museum type situation. And uh, he said his button was the one that was pushed the most. People wanted to see his exhibit the most. So he was tired because he had to keep saying his line over and over again and coming to life. But he was like, he it made him feel proud. Like, yeah, they, they like my, they like our, they like my group daddy. We did good. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was cool to see that, uh, that pride in the young man, you know, especially representing a, a, a black king in that way. So uh, that was dope. And uh, other than that, man, life is good, man. I'm here to kick it and talk it with my homies, man. So that, that, that was the best part of my week every week, you know, outside of hanging with fam. So let's give it, man. How y'all doing this week? Man, I'm all banged up and beat up. Finished putting on these goddamn breaks for this tie today. Uh, well, I am proud of that because I did it by my damn self for the first time. Put my own brakes on. Yeah, there we go. All two by myself. I ain't got to pay nobody to do shit. I buy my own brakes, put them on my damn self. So I'm just adding to my own repertoire of knowledge of shit, how to do my damn self. Um, D, what's it? DIY, do it yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be the fucking king of DIY with this bitch. Oh, shit. And yeah, I ain't paying a nigga to do shit if I ain't got to. But most I'm going to do, I'll pay you one time to do some shit to a car. I'm going to watch your ass do it the whole damn time and you won't get paid again to do it because, damn it, I'm going to have my damn tools do myself. As long as I got the right tools and the right leverage, I can do shit my damn self. Well, fam, we now got uh, our own resident, Schmitty, the the, the partner's mechanic uh, over there. Uh, you can catch him hanging out under an old oak tree with a cigarette hanging out of his lip. Uh, damn right. He'll, serve, the he'll, he'll service your whole vehicle for uh, a couple hundred dollars and a, <laughs> a QP. And a square. Damn right. <laughs> damn right. You damn have the right. Cat back. The right leverage and the right tool. You can do anything you need to do, man. That's all. All bullshit. Right leverage, right tool. I, I know you a too. couple things, you know. I know the I know the oil change. I know the tie. You know the little basic shit. I know how to put do the battery or whatever, but uh. But the kind of them breaks, man, I ain't never messed with it before. So y'all will be getting a, a tutorial video when uh the next time I see Facebook, I'm in VA or when he's in VA, uh, he should be showing me and uh, I'm going to be recording so that y'all can learn with me. By the end of it, partners, we're going to all be changing breaks on our own shit. That shit. <laughs> to do, once, you do, once you do that shit, you look back like, man, that shit was easy as a bitch. The hardest shit is getting the bolts off, man. Like, as long as you know, like, the, the simplest shit to do, you fucking with a tire, turn the wheel, give yourself more space. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Once I turn the wheel, I have all the space I need. I'm like, oh fuck, I got, I got it. <laughs> it's uh, shit. Right leverage, right tool, man. Get everything you need, man. I did fuck up yesterday because I did try to do shit yesterday and undid my brake line. But I found out what my own brake line was. So if I ain't need any problem with my brake line, I know how to fix that shit too now. So shit. Mm-hmm. There you go. See, my thing is, I don't buy new cars. I've never had a brand new car with no miles on it. I always fuck with used cars because I always got to do something to them. I build my knowledge, man. You know how to fuck with your radiator, or your rotor, your brakes, your oil, your tires, your batteries, your headlights, your fuses. Shit, next is the engine, goddamn. Yo, you get the shit. transmission going, buddy. You you pretty much done. Shit, I, I got the alternator, the serpentine belt, I got all that shit. That's a shit, boy. You, that's a wrap. Shit, I put the serpentine belt on without the breaker ball. Shit, yo, good. <laughs> yo, everything you just named is giving me traumas right now because I remember every single time one of them broke down. 
Like an expensive ass snake. Hey, what? Good. But moving on, how you doing, Pat? Well, um, yeah, just like you, I can do all things through God and YouTube that guides me. You know what I'm saying? Huh? I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I helped my stepdad with his um, Corvette light one time. The, the jump was like, it was one light up and the other light was staying down. So. Had to put that traction in there. So it was giving the people's eyebrow. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's been pretty good, man. I, um, my brother came around, uh, got to get to see my nephew and my niece and whatnot. Uh, was drawing with my niece. So that was a good time. My niece, whatever. I actually drew my niece, whatever. Art for, tutor, just, just to see if I could do it. Mm -hmm. She was like drawing it. And then my, um, my nephew, man, he just turned one in January. He's Capricorn also. But Capricorns! Now, uh, Our season. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he actually had COVID on his birthday. But man, mm. that boy is healthy. That boy is healthy as heck. That man, he don't look one. He look three. He look older than <laughs> his older. <laughs> that boy, man, he got all his hair. He got a little high top fade. eating people. Hmm. Nephew, you eating people? Cause I know, yeah, <laughs> cause I know your daddy gonna be watching the podcast. So you out here, not, nephew? Man, he look like he can knock somebody <laughs> out. Uh, like he big bulky arms, he got biceps and everything. Man, he probably well, lifting up weights with, with my brother. Call back before he fourteen, just to let him know. <laughs> that boy, <laughs> brolic man, the young bull. <laughs> he's training. He's training for that confrontation when he. That first time when you look your dad up and down. <laughs> luckily, luckily, my brother is he pretty broad like himself. You know, we got like the Mario brother syndrome. Like he taller than me. <laughs> and, and, he also, and he also works out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I do. I I do some from time to time on the weekend. <laughs> I can hear this being looked up the air. I can how about I do something? Can, can. Can. You know, we can. can, can. can. Do shit, but morning. Can, can. Yep. Can, can. A little more than kind of steady. Your body going to be so. still frail as fuck, nigga. You better. <laughs> nigga going to be having some strong ass hips, but the rest of his body going to be swell. <laughs> do some more than kind of steady. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, you gotta add some, some, some planks in there when you get in there, nigga. Because that that shit ain't gonna <laughs> do it. Ne nephew, nephew, about to take all y'all out. He gonna be like, I'm the dude. What's up, gone, up man? man? I ain't never seen a baby crawl that fast in my life. Hey, man, that, that boy, he gonna tell you to say it with your chest, and it's all over. Y'all yeah, already said it. He's talking his tail off. <laughs> yeah, but, yep, man. Well, Things been all good. One and a half. He had that real, them, 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 them little arms, them little Mike, Mike Tyson arms. I was like, yeah, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Any day you ready, champ. Yeah, Tim, I said, okay. my son is the main reason that I work out to this day. I have weights in my right here in the studio right now because of him. Just in case, whenever I gotta stay ready, just in case, like I stay on my health shit just. Just for that day. Cause I know it's coming. Mm. I be seeing them now when we be when we be like you know, I, I be training them in boxing and shit. I see mm. it now when sometimes he'll hit the he'll hit the pad a little extra. Ha ha! <laughs> daddy. You saw me, daddy. Yeah, I see you, little nigga. The left hook will still drop your ass. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. Oh man. Oh man. But yeah, everything's good on my side. Well, we started off on a very sentimental note tonight. It's all been about uh family and family struggles and family happiness. But uh let's go ahead and kick it off and just go completely against the grain real quick. Face, take it away. Well, guess the grain. Let's go. Man. Uh, Mm -hmm. So this week, my guess the grain, it took me a minute to come up with them because I was really trying to struggle with 
what do I like or dislike that most people do like or don't like? So I came up with three this week. Um, I'm going to start off with my most controversial one. I'm going to say, I think some people deserve to die. I'm sorry. Oh. That's just a personal opinion. I think some people deserve to die. Um, and I'm going to start off with those nasty, stupid ass, perverted pedophiles. Those mm-hmm. are some people I think deserve to die. Um, preachers that touch little boys, I think they deserve to die. Um, Thanks for a lot that. of people that deserve to die. Um, men who rape women, I think they deserve to die. Um, yep. men, who, men who rape, people who rape, I think y'all Period. deserve to die. Back, um, go next. Hmm? Can I please go after after face? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go ahead with my second one. Um, I think that Tyler Perry needs to stop making these damn Madea movies already, man. Amen, I mean, amen. dang. How many move? How many things can this giant old woman get into, man? Hallelujah. Amen. I agree with how that. How long? How long are we gonna celebrate this bullshit? I'm not even gonna get into my, I'm not even gonna get into my real complaint about the Medea movies, but I'm gonna just say how many times can this giant old lady keep getting this giant make believe pretend old lady keep getting in the shit? That nigga said, how long? <laughs> how long, said, man? Like, how, how long? long? How long? They they say uh they say Tyler Perry is the RuPaul of Christianity. Yeah. Now I was talking to my wife about about this one before I put it up there, but she was like, "He can't. He ain't gonna stop making the movies ever because that was his last. His mother's dying wish that he wouldn't stop making Madea movies. So he said he told he promised her he wouldn't stop making them. Man, <laughs> look, black people, let's boycott the Madex, the next Madea movie. Y'all boycott oh. that shit so he don't have so he don't have to make it because if it don't sell a lot, he ain't gonna make another one. Because it's not gonna be a good business decision. He is at the end of their business, man. Y'all keep on entertaining this bullshit. These got dang on Madea movies. He gonna keep making them. Stop watching them so he can stop making these bullshit. My last Instagram, I know I'm gonna have some trouble behind this, but I don't really give a fuck. I feel like The Last Dragon is a cinematic masterpiece for its time. That glow, your body, that glow. You got the glow. When you got the glow, you when you say you cinematic glow. masterpiece, you quantify. I, I I might be rolling with you on that. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what your definition of like how you see a cinematic masterpiece. Did this nigga raise his hand? I don't even know how that. It just pop. randomly popped up. I don't know how it even popped up up there. Like <laughs> I didn't even perfect. know I could do that. Perfect plot. Um, great casting. The 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 soundtrack went. Each, each track was played perfectly in its placement. Um, great ending. Storybook ending. Um, you had uh, it was it's basically like an adult fairy tale come to life. You mean? You, you 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 got your um your your dumbass hero, you got your big bad villain. At the end, he gets toppled. The hero gets the girl. Cinematic masterpiece. And it was an African American Tijuana's. You feel me? Like my thing is, back in the eighties, black people we were big, real big on kung fu flicks. You feel me? This is a black kung fu flick that I, we I can get with. Agree. I ain't gonna agree necessarily, but I ain't gonna disagree either. Like. I, you feel me? Like yeah, Last Dragon was a great, yeah, like, was a great great ass movie. Barry Gordon did his damn thing. The people he picked and placed in David. this movie. Hmm? So the special effects for that day were decent. Exactly. You feel me? For its time, cinematic mm-hmm. masterpiece. Barry Gordon did his thing. It has become a cult classic over the decades. It and it ain't going going nowhere. I've heard people talk about a remake. Don't remake it. Leave it the fuck alone. Because if you remake it, you're going to take away from the damn greatness of the original. The Last Dragon is to be believed where it is. Let Vanity and Tamar, Tamar, excuse me, Jayden. live in live with their great movie. You feel me? Let let them let them have the memory of that. I know Vanity ain't here no more, but damn it, let let her memory's memory live on with that movie. You feel me? Like. 
you can't get nobody to play show enough. It's too clear to show enough in Mortal Kombat. I want to play show enough in the Mortal Kombat game. But his hand starts glowing red. What? <laughs> Come on now. Cinematic masterpiece. Dope. Cinematic masterpiece. I'm going with you on that, man. Like, I Who take your bus to rise to play show right. enough in Mortal Kombat. Yo, that would be dope as hell to have an extra character where he kicked the shit out of nigga and then his fatality be to kiss my car. Kiss my car first. <laughs> Let's off this shit into the nether realm. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you, Face, uh, as against the grain as those opinions are, I, I don't necessarily disagree. Um, especially with your one about death. Um, Cause I don't get sad about every death. There are some people that I'm honestly okay with seeing leave this earth, and some people are a waste of sperm and egg. I, I truly believe that. I, it's not right. Probably I know that makes me a horrible person to have that belief, and it's something that I'm working on trying to change. But there are some people I like. When I look at like I'm a very <laughs> sad person. Like yes, I'm a Christian, but I also believe in science pretty heavily. And when mm-hmm. I look at the animal kingdoms, there are always animals that are born into a litter or born into a herd or whatever, a flock, a troop, a whatever, a pride that are not supposed to make it. Like they're born with defects that allow them to be captured by where easily by other predators. They are not equipped with the right defense so that like whatever it is so for me to sit here and think that humans are any different although we've been able to to our through our intelligence and our advances in technology elongate lives and allow us to have more of our people survive i don't think it was meant to be that way so some people it's okay like and i don't mean like necessarily people that are contributing to the human race but i mean like it's some people that's just like here just doing nothing but making things work they don't necessarily got to be here. Putin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I can't talk. I got a frog in my throat myself. So, yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> Putin. Yeah. That's shit. Right, man. It's, that's, that time of year. Man. But, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I definitely don't think everybody's supposed to be here. <clears throat> Zimmer, man. Then, uh, my second one is I know it's, it's a new thing with like people being woke and uh, you know against it's a thing against people be, being in academia and all this and look I think it's a travesty for a grown up in these days to not have a basic knowledge of geography history science math and language arts at this point in your in your in life everyone should have a basic grasp I'm not saying you need to be an expert in it but the basic maths up until at least I'll say maybe algebra two. Most <laughs> people should have a decent grasp of it. It allows you to understand the world better and it will allow you to actually engage in adult conversations with some level of knowledge. Same with geography. If you don't know where the fuck a country at, how can you have any emotion one way or another on it? How can you understand what's happening in the war if you don't know where this war is taking place? Gives you no context. So you gotta have some geography and history in there. And then with science and language art, they are the way that people communicate. Like science is the way we communicate with nature and understand it. If you don't have a basic understanding of science, there are legit adult conversations that you can't even be a part of because it's over your head. It's beyond you now. It's beyond you now. So um <laughs> you, you you shouldn't you shouldn't reproduce if you don't know basic things about I, science because I, I mean, that's science and language arts. I'm not saying you need to know the language of your second country or like if you visit somewhere that you necessarily have to know that language. I get that part. You're an immigrant or you're a visitor somewhere. Or you're a tourist or whatever. I understand that part. There's going to be a language barrier. But in the country you grew up in, in the language you speak fluently in, that you speak spoken as your primary language your entire life, you should have a basic understanding of that language, the words, what they mean and how to use them and put them together, especially in the age of 2022, where there are literally every piece of information that you would want to know is at your fingertips all the time. There are third world countries where people are making TikTok. 
but you're not gonna tell me hey, y'all niggas better know English. Did not pull up an encyclopedia. I read an encyclopedia for fun as a child. That was just what I did. Get everybody. Mom, that. But at Let's this point, you should have had enough experiences in life where you have had enough time to like Google enough shit to build up a basic, realistic understanding. And no, I don't mean going to Wikipedia for everything because that's not a reliable source. That is completely crowdfunded as far as the information. So yes, it can give you a jumping off point, but you would need to go to some type of scholarly journals, some type of uh, uh, books of academia, some shit that has been peer reviewed, studied. People have repeated this shit from all over the place, from all walks of life. And this shit keep coming up the same, that type of knowledge. Like we can't keep being a stupid population because we don't have to. I can see if all of the, the access to technology theory. and books that got burned, but like we literally have any book you want right there. I have literally learned more as an adult because of technology than I did as a child. And I learned a lot of shit as a child because we used to be forced to like do book reports and go we'll have to like actually read up on shit. And in the search of the information you were actually trying to find, you had to learn about a bunch of other <laughs> Cause you ended up reading passages that ain't have shit to do with what you was looking for, but it won't know the like last, thing of like this is the passage thing. you want. You had to look through that shit. Remember the car catalog, the thing you had to pull do, up back. Do we decimal? We like the last of that generation. I hate that shit. I hate that shit. Do we decimal system? Oh, to this day, I, I go in the library and I teach my son about it. just all the real fact of like as long as there are libraries, you might want to know how to use this shit. Like, as long as things are around in the world, it's good for people to know about it. And I don't mean be an expert on it. Like, there's going to be people who know about astrophysics. I'm not saying that you need to go to that level. But base level shit, you know, gravity, how motion works, you know, hot and cold, boiling, you know, when you see steam, that, that like the basic shit, you know, like at least a eighth grade education on the basic principles of life. We should have an understanding of that. And it's sad because I think that a lot of conversations get fucked up because you have people <clears throat> talking that you will have like a person that is intelligent saying, hey, y'all, this is happening. And this is the science behind it. And then you will have somebody come out of left field. No, it's not because Donald Trump said it's not. And QAnon and I read on, on, on Reddit and, and, and Wikipedia. And Alex Jones. But, but sir, <clears throat> but do you realize that that has, like, that, that you have no evidence or nothing? And you're using no words in ways that they, that, that don't mean what you think it means. I don't, I, that, ain't, that ain't what that word means. <clears throat> like, we got to get smarter people. We have the technology to do it. And we, we are devolving as a population because we are literally just, I don't know why. But we just getting dumber. I I pray for us. I pray for. Us. I'm I'm trying. I'm trying, Tiz. I'm trying my hardest to pronounce these names right. Oh, you are I'm, working on pronunciation. But if I say a word to you, you have an understanding of that basic word. Now, if I throw a word yeah. in a, that's from a specific niche that you've never been a part of, I get those things. Like if you're not like if somebody came in here talking to me and they started speaking specifically about coding. I would know some basics because overarching themes I have an understanding of. They will get into some specifics where they'll be talking in a language that is specifically only to that niche. So I would be kind of needing to understand that. You mispronouncing words is one thing. I'm talking about people who don't have a base level understanding of the word in the first place. Oh, true. Mm -hmm. Like you may not be able to say aerodynamic, but I can guarantee if I showed you a wing, you can understand the principle that I'm explaining to you. You feel me? Aerodynamic, yeah, I see. But, but you feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah, I ain't talking about like, I'm fumbling over words. I'm talking about once I get the word, I still don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. That oh, no, that's where we- Yeah, I know the word. Like, I just, just my, I got a so speech cool. impediment or something. <laughs> That's where we're going. That's what I'm talking about. We're like, we dumb mm. people are happy to be dumb. They almost are mad at people when they're intelligent. Like, are you mad because I just understand basic shit? 
okay. Like we we got this Paris Hilton type thing where like everybody just like see it's it's a it's a flip flop mentality. Yeah, yeah it, it's it, it's your you're trying to be an elitist. No, I'm trying to have an intelligent conversation as an adult. It's it's like a mental paradox because smart people realize they don't know everything, and dumb people think they know everything. Bing bing bing. Mental paradox. Amen. No whatever. Which leads me to my against the grains. First mm-hmm. off, I hate humans. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's stand up. <laughs> Always warring and shit. <laughs> breathing all my air. Breathing all this good oh, black God. man air. God damn, up with it. Good air. Just, and just polluting it. Oh, I don't know if that was a pause, but it felt wrong. Anyway, but all right, first, first against the grain. I don't think spoilers. Wow, see, there I go, messing up next. I don't think spoilers are that bad. I really don't. Why? First of all, the key things about spoilers is you don't have to watch them and you don't have to pay attention. You know, a movie's coming out. Look, the Batman is coming out this week. I'm not going, I'm not looking, paying attention to nothing on social media until my birthday can get to a movie. Yep, this week. Hey, you're going to watch it this week and you don't have to go to the theater. You can still go to the theater to get the experience of it as well, but you can watch Mm -hmm. it. (laughs) I'm going to make sure you do. I got you. But this this is the thing. This is the thing. I can get, like, I can watch spoilers and they still won't take away from the movie for me because majority of the time, I already know what is going to happen in the movie. I either watch the movie or it's in a genre of movie like superhero movies that I already know the basis of the, the character. So usually when they have a spoiler, it's something I already knew that was going to come out. You know, Doctor Strange got Professor X in it. Ooh, I didn't know that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but I would say that. I agree with you on that one because as far as spoilers to me, some not for every movie. For some movies, I like to just catch them early, but usually I would just do that and catch them early. Mm-hmm. But for a lot of movies, to me, I like to see the spoilers because I like to get somebody else's take on it and then watch the movie for myself. Because I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I don't know whether it's a Capricorn thing or it's just the way my brain works thing, but I'm very good at detaching from things, so I can easily compartmentalize. Yeah what I heard about it and then mm-hmm. still watch it as a fresh movie and get a whole nother experience out of it just so like it don't really bother me like I, I kind of enjoy mm-hmm. that type of thing of like all right you said this is this, this, this okay. so then let me watch it and then to mm-hmm. me I'll I'll watch it like, help me a little bit because now I'm not trying to figure out the plot I'm going to watch the movie and experience the emotion of it and, and, and catch camera angles that I wouldn't have caught otherwise like it kind of frees my mind up a little bit the way I think anyway so I like a spoiler or two. And then yeah, it, sometimes, the sometimes the spoilers, you know, they warn you away from whack ass movies. Or yeah, so make you want to see a good ass movie. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I look at this like, regardless of what the spoiler is and what the spoiler makes me think, I still go watch the movie because I mean my opinion overrates anybody's opinion to me. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, if you if you know me, you know I like some weird ass shit. So yeah. I can't take a spoiler and be like somebody like, well, this movie is in music. I might look at the spoiler and be like, I like that shit. Like, what the fuck they talking about? Let me go watch this shit in my damn self. Sometime, man. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Too. Face then gave us some spoilers that didn't lead to some <clears throat> shit. Like, Face, Face was the one that gave the spoilers for Squid Games. And they think, you know, had me hooked. So, like, I, yeah, because I, I, I was like, even watching that joke. A spoiler can be a really good teaser because sometimes <laughs> the actual trailer or something, it doesn't. <laughs> Intrigue enough it doesn't give away enough of the pl- like a good trailer should give away enough of the plot to make me want to see okay where is this going? Sometimes the trailer can be convoluted and then I get a spoiler from somebody <clears throat> or somebody tell me oh man and this will happen. To- I would like to see that. I hear you say mm-hmm. but I want to see that. Let me go check that out. So like you know, and so- and sometimes sometimes the spoiler really don't spoil anything. It might give you like general information just to confirm that you something that you intended on happening. And then sometimes 
like you said, it sometimes I like to go back on back to the spoiler because maybe it's something in the movie that was confusing to me and I just didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I don't think they're that bad or whatever. I'm, I'm, but some I'm, we, we pro spoilers over here, I guess. Yeah. Some spoilers, y'all just assholes. Like you know there's certain things you shouldn't say anyway. And you just go ahead and say. It. Indeed. Like, yeah. Um my last one is uh all right with this Ukraine thing, I've been seeing some videos um going along and um I've learned something new. There's black people in the Ukraine. Who knew? Yes, there I are. Mean, who knew that the first people on earth, black people are somewhere on earth? Who knew? Oh okay. right. So, but uh, I don't like how they were getting treated. Like some of them getting pushed off the trains or whatever when they were evacuating. Um, and then a lot of them were like students or whatever. So this got me to thinking <clears throat> or whatever. I think as a people, before we take up arms and die for a whole nother nation, um, we need to do research on how black people are treated there. Before I start giving fuck, like, too much we just need to see that you know what i'm saying like yeah. i don't want to be putting my my heart into caring about the people yeah. you know and then i go back and then like after i did that then i see my people getting pushed off and mushed off the train or whatever yeah. like uh we we didn't ask for the we didn't ask for russia to come in and this bitch either we're citizens too like what the fuck very much but then they'd be the first ones to have us be in the front lines yep front lines. always <clears throat> front lines now shit that won't defend us now i'm not going to say this is all of ukraine doing this it just looked like this was like um because it, it looked like they had uniforms at the time so it looked like it was like a particular group of ukrainians doing that or whatever so i don't want to put the whole blame on the government because one i don't live in the fucking ukraine and then i actually with that i got i wanted to do more research before i speak on it so i like looked at interviews about people that live there and stuff like that and they said like they're you know, it's racism everywhere and there's ignorance everywhere, but theirs is a more innocent ignorance. Like, um, like they just don't know. Why does it keep telling me I'm about to raise my hand? Okay, you have <laughs> but but <laughs> it, it just keep doing that on purpose. I mean, I don't, on its own. But um, it made me lose what I was about to say. You were talking about the. <laughs> How they it was more of an innocent. Um, yeah, it was more mm -hmm. like they, they just didn't have enough didn't examples know. of black people around them uh to know how to act or what to say, or this might be offensive if you said it this way, and then that too, or whatever. But um I also <laughs> this might be another just the brain, man. I think I'm gonna make it another gets the grain since face got three, but we shouldn't just certain ignorance just shouldn't be excused like in general all right i understand if you just don't know or whatever but these news like some of these um international um news companies the way they're saying stuff like like this is europe we don't expect europe to go through things like this like a third world country like with like like iraq or one of those african countries so i was like so you you're saying like we're used to it like 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 around countries we were built for that like we, this is Europe things like this don't happen here excuse me um Europe y'all have a long history before y'all became civilized but this shit happened in every day or whatever Putin is just he's he's just being a granddad trying to bring back the good old days. <laughs> Remind us that no matter where you are in the world, if you're black, you are seen as just an international nigga. You feel it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, yeah, those are my I guess the grains, man. Uh, main thing is, um, before we start crying tears for people, let's 
see how these people act towards us first. You know, hold back them tears. No lies. But, no. but I don't want any, any and I, this is not for any innocent bystanders and citizens because I don't wish that on no nation, no people at all. Pretty much. Right. And man, just a uh, prayers out to all of the innocent people that are all over there losing lives and having their, you know, basic way of life destroyed, you know what I mean, for some shit that ain't got nothing to do with them. Like, prayers up to y'all. I hope y'all pull through. I hope things work out to where y'all are able to rebound, and I hope that the evil that is uh, causing all this trauma for y'all is uh, rectified very soon. <clears throat> but yeah, man, um, from that fuckery, <laughs> I think it's that time, man. The clock on the wall has been Tick. Well, fuck it. Let's not waste no time. Y'all already know what time it is because it's getting late. It's the good and fuckery episode. It's the good and fuckery. Oh, I got a lot of shit to say. I didn't think we were going to have a lot of things Water to say, to say. To say today. <laughs> good and fuckery. My last screen sure. before I start getting into the topics or whatever. Don't worry, Ukraine. I'm gonna give y'all some big ups later on. But uh let's let's start off Ukraine. the good and fuckery. Yeah. Let's start off the good and fuckery like this. Yo, so um I decided to watch that new um Fresh Prince Bel Air show. Ooh. Started it off or whatever. Have y'all seen that yet? I refuse yeah. to watch it. I understand why. Um I looked at it like this. I went into it because I know my nostalgia is going to take away from it. I went into it like this is a total different show. And it made me appreciate it more. So I just looked at it as like that. It was entertaining as if I look at it like a total different show because he is not will to me. Only will can be will to me. But that doesn't mean that another black child did not go through the same story is is a common story pretty much they actually like the reason why will actually went over to bel-air or whatever is uh is i mean they made this show into like a drama whatever so i'm not going to say they didn't do a good they they did a good job with this show it's or whatever the around community that's in the show yeah, like they they did their thing. They made Philly. It didn't just sound like you know on Fresh Prince or whatever. You never really experienced Will in Philly. Maybe a couple of episodes here and there, but you didn't really feel like the drama of it. This that and the third. Right. You feel the drama of it. You feel the reason, the exact reason why he would have came over and stuff like that. It has a lot of black culture clashing into it or whatever. So. As a show, if I don't look at it as a Fresh Prince reboot or whatever, because, you know, reboots have a bad taste in our mouth, pause, pretty much. Leave um, shit alone. I'm, it's, I think of it as a creative twist, pretty much. But there's one thing that bothers me that I just want to point out. Carlton is a bitch-ass nigga in this show. He... <laughs> I want to fight this nigga. I want to fight this little nigga in this show. <laughs> he's he's a bitch ass nigga in this show. He's a, like Carlton in in the first Fresh Prince. All right, he was corny, he was goofy, but he wasn't really. He, he he's he was lovable. Pause. You know. You know what I'm saying? This guy. I want to knock him out. First time I've seen man. I'm gonna knock you out. Huh. Huh. Yo, like he he just like it's certain things, it's certain things that he do that I'm like, all right, I kind of feel you on that, but the way you do stuff is violation. You know what I'm saying? And then I don't know. And he's basically a sellout. So fuck that nigga. Anyway. <laughs> Do you think that really... on the original show did some of the same same things, but it didn't come across the same because he was doing it in a comedic way as opposed to 
this, which is as more of a realistic type of take on it? No, I would say, well, I would put this Carlton is the realistic extreme of that Carlton. Like the bougie, I want to be around the preppy white people to the extreme. The only thing different is they kind of touched on like the slight racism that you have or whatever, but they have a scene where they just go straight at it. Like, all right, white people, you shouldn't be doing this type stuff. And Carlton letting it slide because he goes to that high school or whatever. And Will ain't for that shit. So, yeah. But that's not even the one thing that made me feel like he a bitch at me. He just, the way he act. Hmm? It was just an overall... In just general, the way he just act. Like Nick. Yeah, basically. <laughs> just, he just did it. Was he just, he a bit he, like, he, like, emotional for certain stuff that you just shouldn't be emotional, snooty, and, and, and conniving, and manipulative, like, that type. My shit. Check, would, um, <laughs> let me ask a question because I haven't seen the series. Is there mm-hmm. a Hillary? Yes. Okay, never mind then. Because I was going to say if it wasn't a Hillary, they probably added some of her characteristics into Carlton to make him more like that. But mm-hmm. being there's a Hillary, throw that out. <laughs> Hillary. Ashley, all right, this. A baby Nikki? No, nah, not a baby Nikki. There is an Ashley, but you barely see her as much. Hillary, she's more of a prominent like character pretty much and she's not like a ditzy person or whatever like she's is she in love with a newscaster named trevor nah we haven't gotten that far yet hillary is, is, is james yeah jazz is cool as shit i like his i like that version of jazz jazz is cool as shit he jazz was jazz jazz was definitely <laughs> jazz Phil. His Uncle Phil Uncle, still fat. Uncle Phil's not fat. Oh. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> Uncle Phil's not fat. The, the point of the show is- but Uncle Phil is an alpha. Yeah. And um, oh. like he's an still alpha, a believable alpha. cat. Like an alpha. Like alpha phi. Alpha. Yeah, oh, yeah. Alpha, alpha. Like an alpha phi alpha. Like a yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like a um, fraternity. Alpha. Gotcha. Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't use that word. <laughs> no, I don't like that word at all. Shit's corny. Anyway, unless, it's, unless you're talking about Alpha 5 and Power Rangers or Alpha just in general as a, as a term. Um, nothing to do with red pill stuff. But I, I like I like his character. It's a believable character. I, I would put it there. The characters up there are believable characters. Okay. I, I'll give him that. I'll give them that. They don't like I've seen the viral video that started all this. And mm-hmm. I mean that was that was done beautifully too. I thought it was just a cool like homage to Fresh Prince when it came out. And then when I saw this, I was like, I don't know, I was kind of proud because I was like, all right, that's a YouTube content creator that made it that far. That's something I would want to oh, do. Yeah. So like when I first saw that, I was like, it was just it wasn't even talks of it being a show or whatever. They just did this little viral video for a second and just put it out there just to see how people thought, and it just blew up. So, I mean, that's what I, I feel like. Social media is a new star search, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead of yeah, having to have a TV show, they give a bunch of people opportunity to make their own shows, and people just sit there all day and type into them like, "Oh, I like that one. Let's make more stars." Oh, I like that one. Let's make more stuff. Oh, I like that one. Let's no push him to the side. We'll wait. I like no, not that one. That one make him a star. I think social media's culture kind of like I'm trying to say it takes away from hip hop culture because you know, like in hip hop culture, it's the people in the streets that say it dictates what's cool, what's not cool, what we actually like. And if you really think the way the algorithms stay, if, if enough people like a certain thing or whatever, 
even if like a big production company don't pick up on it at first or whatever, they can create a, a momentum and likes or whatever where somebody has to notice because the algorithm is sending those um, alerts that, hey, this is doing big things. So I, well, I would say, I don't know, this is one thing about them. them. One thing I want them to take away from the hip hop culture is put the, these fucking pants hanging down on your ass. We need for judges and lawyers to start walking around with their pants hanging down so black kids will stop it. Because they, once they see people who they think are corny doing it, they won't do it. As long as they see people they think cool doing it, they're going to keep doing it. We need school teachers, bus drivers, we need people in good professions that these kids think are corny to walk around looking like these kids and they won't do it. As we see, every time the corny people start doing it, it becomes not cool. When did dabbing stop? When the corny people started dabbing? Start pulling your pants down, corny people. That, Help me out. <laughs> I, 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 I want these people to stop wearing their pants below their ass. I need it's the corniest so people nice. in the world. I, I need the most professional people. Wear your pants below your ass. You see me? Come it's, on. I, I, I need some lawyers to come in the court. Like, I need some lawyers and judges to come in there and pull their pants up. And the people they represent, like, hold up, man. Why is she dressed like that? What the fuck? Like, shit, you do it, son. I'm going to do it, too. This, this is mean, no fleek, ain't it? You know, all like, you need is one white celebrity on a um, on a commercial. All you need is one white celebrity on a commercial to do something black and we'll never do it again. Where's Rodney? Come on, Tom Hanks. Come on, Tom yeah. Hanks. Except kill Come black on, people. Because for some reason, we see white people kill black people all the time on TV and we yeah. still continue to do that. We need to see... I'm sorry, I took who, a dark left on that. I'm sorry. Who, 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 is the, who is the whitest white man? The whitest white man. Who is the whitest the white man, man who ever white? M- uh, Mike Pence. There you go. Let Mike see come out busting the sag, man. Let Mike take some out with sags. <laughs> I guarantee they'll stop the whole culture doing that shit. Like Pence busting the sag, not sag and pants on. Not Mike Pence. Like, like, that would definitely uh, shut a lot of shit down quick. B- that's what I believe, oh, they but that's just me personally. Like that bumping NBA young boy. Mm-hmm. That'll shut a lot of shit down. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean, can y'all like think of anybody else higher in the mayo meter? <laughs> Mayonnaise no, meter? Man. Anybody? I don't think oh. Mike, Ty- Mike Pence. You said Mike Pence? I think Mike yeah. Pence is kind of high on the mayo meter. Ooh. Ooh, what's that nigga with the neck? What's the nigga with that neck name? Um, the neck and the glasses, the the turkey neck. You got the turkey oh, neck. Oh, oh, uh, Mitch McConnell. There you go, turkey neck. <laughs> okay, Mitch McConnell may have, he may have about five. no, no. I can't say Mitch. I can't. Say... I don't know. What the fuck he? <laughs> Hold on, no sir. No, sir. Oh my god, nigga, not like that. The nigga with the neck, the nigga with the, tur- the turkey neck. <laughs> you know, I would say, I would say Mitch McConnell is like higher in the Mayo meter, but he has an Asian wife, and Mike Pence has one of the whitest wives that you could probably white in your I life. Got it. I know who the white is, is on the Mayo meter. Mitt Romney. If you watch that nigga half Mexican. If you watching, man, that nigga white. You watch and listen to him. Every stereotype you think of when you think of white. <laughs> that nigga, yeah. Them shit like ding, oh, ding. oh, I got one for you. I got I got a I got a little history for y'all. I got a little history for y'all. So do you know like not in our parents' day, before our parents' day, they had a white racist word for white people, like they got the N word for us. Cracker? Honky. No, before that. Before that. Honky. Oh, Fay. Oh, Fay. Oh, oh, I remember that. Oh, Fay. <laughs> we said that shit like, so why we said that shit like we were saying that shit back in the older time ourselves, like we was back on the porch of 1860. <laughs> I remember that shit. 
Remember them OJ? Oh, OJ. That shit like we remember the OJs or something like. Hey man, they was good. Why did them damn OJ? They were good. Yeah, they were good. <laughs> Oh, ain't that? Oh, ain't that messed up though? We've been, like we've been missing. Like who was that? Who was that? Who was them good people used to come to dinner all the time? You remember they used to come to dinner pudding? The old face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the opposite of that Dave Chappelle skit. Yo, the niggas. Yes, yes. I thought about Opie and them as soon as I said, "Yo, yes, I can see that." Shit. You know what I was going to say about Mitt Romney says it's so crazy that the whitest, whitest person in the Mayo meter is like half Mexican. Yeah, (laughs) that's crazy. And well, you know what is though? It's a lot of it's a lot of Hispanic, you know, backgrounds Mm -hmm. that yeah, they have to make sure they they can get a come up. Mm-hmm. Now, Pat, I know we on the fuckery, so I'm gonna throw another fuckery out there because I didn't see it on your fuckery list. And Go ahead. It was something I'm, it was something I mentioned, uh, uh, I think a, a good twenty episodes ago, and something I derived from the show Atlanta by Donald Glover. Did y'all see this motherfucker in the news talking about he transracial now? He's white. I mean, uh, he uh, he's yeah. black. Yeah, the white dude. He yes. Dude or something like that, a streamer or something like that. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Didn't we brought that up? I just yeah, wanted to mention it. We got like people. Out of, uh, you uh, heard it here first. Or something like that. Some, some, some shit. He got kicked out of something because of that shit. Yeah, he got kicked off. People he said he identified as transracial. We don't brought that transracial. We brought that transracial shit to the forefront on podcasting first. We did it. We did it here at the podcast. Now the public is trying to jump on them being transracial. No motherfucker. Me and Dave Chappelle said it first. I can't go around talking about myself. I am Chinese. Call me Chinese. I can't do that. Speaking, David. You can't speaking do that. of you him, can't be all right. speaking of you, say that's funny. You said I am Chinese because the other week I did bring up that um that British dude that was trying to be that Korean um K-pop star or whatever yeah. with the penis reduction. Which I uh, like. Why would any sane man want that? But um, yeah, pause. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Blow the whistle on this before you can say it. Now. Blow, blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. Now, now on this P reduction, I'm not even gonna say the full word. On this P reduction for him to be a Korean man, he had to do research to 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 know this, right? Mm-hmm. Because you yeah. can't just be like. Okay, this culture has small peas, so I'm gonna I'm go. No, because we all know every culture is not a monolith. So I don't want to go into the pea conversation, but did he have to go research and look at different peas in Korea or different Korean peas? No, I want to have my. You mean like, yeah, exactly. Blow that whistle on this coming. Like, what? My, my man, like, come on, friend. Don't I'm going to answer you like this, face. Um, if you actually see the dude that's doing it, you would expect. It would explain a lot about his research process. People, people, please. I know technology is advancing, but I'm gonna come. calm down. Calm down with that bullshit. It's, it's too, too late, Faith. It's too much going on. <laughs> it's too late, Faith. I mean, these niggas gonna be I mean, purple they, they, with tails after a while. They, they, this, this is the thing I want people to understand. They For the longest time. We've already we used to say people always said age or ages ain't nothing new under the sun ain't nothing new. shit Trans-color. it's some new shit it's some new Trans-color. shit under the sun nowadays it's some shit my grandma and my grandma and grandma ain't never fucking seen walk around this planet nowadays what niggas is arguing about pronouns we're not gonna get in that conversation but this is what we had in 2022 we arguing about a fucking pronoun nigga well fuck what you want to be called. That don't matter to me. Did All you I hear me call say, your motherfucking name? Come get your shit. I called your name. <laughs> what you, what you, what, what you think you are? That don't even fucking matter to me. I don't know you personally, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you, wherever I meet you, we got to do business. As soon as it's fucking business, go do what you want to do. 
What's your name? Okay, that's what the fuck I'm gonna call you. What if you give me an ID and your ID say Henry, but you telling me your name is Henry Etta, I have to say Henry because your ID says Henry. I can't legally call you something else. Oh, okay, you Henrietta, so when Henry yet? Because I can I can only give this thing to Henry. <laughs> We're not going to go too far, but if your ID say something, if you go, what? Well, let, let's move on. Let, let's move on. <laughs> Henrietta goes to the doctor. The doctor says, "Hey, Henry," and Henry was like, "No, I am Henrietta." Well, Henrietta, you got testicular cancer. <laughs> All right, I'm stop. I'm gonna stop. Oh man, this fucking is gone everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's doing something, I tell you that. We we oh the, tonight tonight is one of the nights, boy. Tonight is a night, boy. This is different. We are the night is nighting. The night is nighting. It is your night, boo. Hey, before I go any further, did y'all see that movie Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Dan DeVito? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Y'all remember when he was saying tonight is your night, bro? Tonight is your night, bro. The one I was about to get some ass. <laughs> tonight is your night, bro. Danny, Danny DeVito was trans uh, tall. He was trans tall in that one because he had a twin that was taller than him. You know what? That's the new thing. I'm going to be trans tall, damn it. I'm trans tall. I identify six foot tall now. Well, just in case y'all are confused about me, he is I and I am him slim with the tilted brim. <laughs> <laughs> I identify as a man with an 850 credit score. <laughs> I want all my rights to me. Shit. I, I love to pick my I love to pick what the hell I want to be too, because I damn sure don't identify as, as a black if this is what it get me. I, I'll identify as a <laughs> tiny water bottle for the minute if I need. I'm a I'm trans uh, white privilege out of this bitch. I just, yeah, I'm flu. I just, I just run through streams, you know, head out to the ocean every once in a while, evaporate up and ooh, then ooh. down in rain. Ooh, ooh. Shit. If we want to go for identify the common cold, you can't never get rid of me. Shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. Ever. These mother, see, this is my thing. Y'all so busy worried about the big bad COVID. I sneak in every year. The motherfuckers ain't even worried about me. I'm guaranteed. No, I worry about you every day because you know, I start coughing and stuff. I can't sleep at night. This should be annoying. Then I got to work in the morning. Yeah. All right. Can't call out because you got a COVID. <laughs> <motherfucker. laughs> you, y'all want to know what's funny? I ain't even got nowhere near half the fuckery yet. We just. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. I'm gonna fly through this. All right. In a in a um attempt to pander for Black History Month, I'm I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm gonna just say this. Uh, Biden nominates. Man, I'm gonna mess this up. Kentaji Brown Jackson. Is it Ketanji Brown Jackson to be the first Black woman to sit on the Supreme Court? I, really- I said. I respect it for two reasons. I like yeah. the fact that it's a black queen, and it's one of the few things that he's like said he was gonna do that he followed through on. So I'm gonna respect. It. Good job. I also, you did I also it, Joe. respect it because it's about damn time. <laughs> we did it, Joe. It's 2022. Oh. You know what I'm saying? We did it, Joe. <laughs> Come on, where, where the hell is she at? Did where the fuck is she at? She's somewhere from she Charlemagne to God. Nothing. <laughs> Did she do any damn thing? Pat, what you just say? Did you just drop a bombshell live on that? No, she he said fucking. She's fighting with Charlemagne to God. <laughs> Boy, I thought you said she's somewhere fucking Charlemagne to God. I was about to be like, oh, no, nah, that, that would have been hilarious <laughs> if I was the first one to find out, man. If this I first found out. What the fuck? What? Whoa! <laughs> 
never got our hands on no information like that before. If I give y'all, hey, yeah, if I give y'all song. some information, I'm gonna give y'all some heads up before we get into it. Hey, look, nigga, I don't sound up some shit, and we about to go. Boy, I'm like, nigga, who, 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 what you talking? This space belongs on the tizzle. Oh, you know, how, how do we uh get this out tonight? I was about to stay up there. Who do you know? Who do you know? This, this, <clears throat> this cannot wait. Tonight. Yeah. Nigga. Oh, Nigga, don't do that to me, bro. Don't, don't threaten me with a good time. Yet. Do not threaten me with but, a good time. But um, um, bigs up to Kataji Brown Jackson for creating some Black history at the end of Black History Month and creating some women's history in the beginning of Women's History Month. March is Women's History Month. Good time. No respect. Is every month something there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Black History Month started it. And yeah. What is it? Can I just get regular months? You got uh, January. That's January. You, you know there ain't nothing happening in January. Yes, it is Capricorn season. That that's true. But that's January and December because Yeah, we yeah. have months. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You got no nut November. I don't believe in that. It's against my religion, my spiritual beliefs, and my values as a human being. So I don't know what the fuck people talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I figured if we was gonna just keep taking it too damn far, then we'll fuck it. Fuck it, let's go. All right. Someone that took it too far, uh, on TikTok or whatever, according to Tiana Taylor. Um, this TikToker who alleged is a um, ex assistant of Tiana Taylor, she made a video. Didn't really say her name or whatever, but she said this singer, who um, who husband was just on a TV show, uh, getting accolades. I believe it was like uh, dance, one of those Dancing with the Stars shows, or whatever. Um, her husband cheated on him. And all she do is just trip over it and sniff what they say candy, but sniff coke in the bathroom all day. And people are putting the points together and saying that this person is talking about Tiana Taylor. And Tiana Taylor said that y'all better have your court coin ready Damn. for your alleging court. that your the court. court coin. Yeah. But um, alleging such things that you would think that any person would make her go off the deep end and overdose on, on any drug and that she's getting abused by her husband. And I will, she said, basically, I will bury that nigga my damn self before I let that happen. Um, Cause you know, she's Tiana Taylor and, um, and um, she's about that life, whatever. That she is drink. the tallest short person I've ever seen in my um in person. I'll tell you that much. She does have a pack. Mm-hmm. No matter with an eight pack. Mm-hmm. So um I don't know what y'all are doing um because Tiz brought this up with the Tasha K and Cardi B situation or whatever. Um Tiana spoke alone. Yeah, you better leave him alone, man. Had your facts right, right. Hope you got your court coin. Because uh, Tasha hey, K said she's uh, bankrupt, uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, mm. what the, what's the vice president? Kamala is not fucking mm. Charlemagne. That was just me. It's him. That is that is not what we said. No, no, no. We are nah, not. Char- no. That's not true. We I just misheard. Mm-hmm. Please don't sue us. Mm-hmm. It won't get shit. Not me. Not at all. Nope. Unless y'all believe I'm trans uh eight fifty credit like this. <laughs> well you end up paying me more than, than you spent uh doing it by the end of it. You'll be getting some um some fake crypto. <laughs> that's, soup, that's about it. All right, moving right along. NFT. Um the game is being the game again. Um first he said it that he should have been in the uh, Super Bowl halftime, probably well, because he's he been in Super Bowl halftime and he's not a part of. Like, I don't understand what was his. What would be his role? 
the game being the game okay. and yeah, just the game being the game, that will be his Dre role. About that. Huh? Did he talk to Dre about it? I'm pretty sure he didn't. Um I'm pretty sure he didn't. This is was this was aftermath. <laughs> it's somewhat I did. Aftermath of the Dr. Dre halftime special. Um pretty much uh the game said that he should have been a part of that special and personally all right let's look at the stars that we have we have dr dre someone who has influenced the whole culture the uh snoop dogg who's probably the most famous even more than jay-z the most famous rapper on the planet i mean there's an argument there yep you're right um Mary J. Blige, who basically shaped R&B music in the 90s. Um, we went from there to 50 Cent. Go, go, go. 50 Cent literally has been going, it was pretty much diamond when he first came out. Pretty much, yeah. Um, after that, we have Kendrick Lamar. Checks out. Kendrick Lamar is a Pulitzer Prize winner. Yeah. Pull, ooh, yeah. And uh, Kendrick Lamar has a, also an album cover with, with George Bush getting beat up by niggas in front of the White House. I'm, I'm, uh, that's some bold statements. Then you have Eminem. Mr. Diamond. Yeah. And that, yeah, I, I don't think you're going to beat him. Eminem My at thing all. Is, so if the man that brought you into the game and the man that is on a lot of your bigger hits, if he got a very small snippet in this performance, because he was amongst these legends that were outshining him, what make you think you're gonna make this marquee brother? I can see if you played an instrument or something like Anderson Park, where like you could come in and slide in on that angle. But um brother. Yeah, that was my next thing. I was maybe say. Over, you may be over, <laughs> overshooting your reality. Like this is where self awareness got to kick in, and you got to realize your place in the world. Realistically, I understand how you feel about yourself, but mm. I feel like I'm the greatest thing walking. Like I'm the most handsome man on earth, and like I, everybody should bow before me. That don't make it true. I'm fucking gorgeous, and it is true. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the the gay man. Um, you no, know, I saw a lot of people. You're wild and gay. Right. Yeah. Hey, roll with yes. you. I told you, uh, I said it before, he'd be doing mm -hmm. some wild shit sometimes. And uh, along with this that, on that one, what'd you say? All the, right, game you feel, the game feel like he a legend, because when he came out, we not nobody really doing nothing for the West, so he feel like he held the West. But nigga, like, <laughs> you still ain't do shit for the West. You At you all. really didn't, you didn't hold it down. Like, you mm -hmm. doing... He did more for me in two weeks than Dr. Dre did my whole career. Dr. Dre gave gave you a platform. One be here with Kanye. Me. Kanye didn't give you a platform. <clears throat> I don't know what beats. your work ethic was. I don't know what your work ethic was when you came into the game, but I guarantee <clears throat> it's not the same now as it was then. So one thing all people all people do in any situation, they always look outside. This person didn't do this. This person, but what did you do in that situation that you're doing differently now in your new situation? If you're not doing nothing different, then it was the other person. But if you see the inkling of difference in what you're doing, you had just as much to do with that bad situation as the other person. So don't put all eyes on Dr. Dre and try to bring him down because he just did some monumental shit and he balling and he got the money. Lives, Keep aspiring, you? brother. Keep aspiring. You thought you was going to get on, drink chap, say some shit, go viral, and then start getting money from that. And You're still going to be the same rapper who, who name drops on almost every song. Do be the same and dude. do flaw shit all the time for, like, views. Maybe if, you'd have got your, maybe if you'd have took yourself out of the street element when you started to get popular and fame, maybe Dr. Dre would be like, okay, we could do some more. But maybe you didn't take the advice that he took, that he told you from his NWA days, man, leave that street shit alone if you're trying to do the music and we can do this and this and this. And this. But if you didn't want to do that, hey, I'm going to separate myself because I ain't going, you feel me? 
Maybe you kept getting into more issues. issues. You kept having issues. Yeah. Like at a certain point, we can't blame our success on nobody else. It's our success. You can't blame your success on nothing that he did this for me. You a grown ass man talking about what somebody else did for you. What? Are you serious? If I was in your position with the amount of money you have, I wouldn't be talking about what nobody did for me because I'd be making moves for myself. Even more than I gotta do now. You hear me? You have the capital to do what you need to do. I'm trying to get to the point where you at. And I damn sure ain't looking for another man to do it for me or aid me in that journey. Now, if advice comes or I can partner with somebody, cool, we can partner, we can do whatever, we can make money together. <clears throat> but I'm never gonna look at another man and be like, well, this may help me more than you did. Give a fuck, nigga. Rule one, you never help a person more than they're willing to help themselves. And I guarantee at this point in your career where you're trying to get back on top and Kanye is at this point in his career where he's doing all this different shit, your hunger is a lot different than what it was when you came into the game. I guarantee your hunger is a lot different. So you're willing to do a lot of different things. Speak on, be real, man. When y'all getting these interviews, be self-aware first before you start talking shit about other people because at the end of the day, that shit gonna wrap right around. So that's And become a of what your true, 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 true ass was. Yeah. Self-aware, I was gonna say. See, the, the difference between there's superstars and there's people that are famous. The people in that halftime show were superstars and have been proven time and time again that they are superstars. Game, you are another rapper. <clears throat> Your claim is, is that you put on the West when the West wasn't doing nothing and you did it by rapping like you were from New York. That's not going to get you on a legendary stage like the halftime show with those people particularly. Especially when the style of rapping like New York at that time was slowly phasing out and the South was coming in. Or whatever. Place in the world, man. That's really what it is. Like it, it, everybody ain't the top. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the top of anything. So when you realize, like, you got to just know your place. Like, come on, bro. Fuck out of here. And then one more thing, because he gets on my nerves or whatever. Like I said before, superstars. Superstars don't have to do certain things that regular um, um, famous people do, whatever. He, time and time again, like I said before, do flaw shit to get some type of attention. Don't get me wrong. He makes good music. He, he makes some good music. I, I, I can't, the man can make a song. He can, he can make a song. But at the, he's just not a superstar. He just seems like he's he's the creative character on Def Jam Vendetta with the West Coast template. That's, Mr. That's Bean is a bigger superstar than the game is, man. Hmm? Just say Mr. Bean, like Mr. Bean. Mr. The, Bean, Mr. Bean is a bigger superstar than the game is, motherfucker. If I saw the game and I saw Mr. Bean. I lose it when I see Mr. Bean. I be like, that's fucking game. Because you don't <laughs> see Mr. Bean, nigga. You don't see Mr. Bean. Yo, I really want to see you see Mr. Bean when they pause. Because that is hilarious in my head. I'm going to fucking lose that's it. I said pause. Uh, uh, yo, I'm going to fucking lose it. If I see Mr. Bean in the game, fuck the game, nigga. Who, who? You're a regular motherfucking rapper, nigga. That's Mr. fucking Bean, nigga. He's a legend. He's a fucking legend. The fuck? He's a bigger superstar than the game. And it's Mr. Fucking Bean. <laughs> and if y'all listening, y'all don't know who Mr. Bean is, Google who the fuck Mr. Bean is. And y'all gonna be like, oh, this nigga? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this nigga? <laughs> Well, well, damn. Well, damn. Yeah. Know your place, game. All right. This <laughs> next one, I don't even know how to got there. <laughs> Segue into it. Yeah, that was awkward. I really, I really don't know. Um, pause. I'm going to pick the violation up. <clears throat> 
man hospitalized after shoving a double A battery into his penis. Why? I don't know. Um, man in Tehran, Iran, 49 year old, evidently, um, I don't know. I don't know why no. anybody would do this. No. Maybe they thought no. they were a like no. a sex toy. No. I don't no. know. <clears throat> no. No, 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 no. Now, as a young man, I had to have a medical procedure where I had to have a catheter. You know, that wasn't too pleasing. And he went five times further than that and put a double A battery. Mm. My thing is, what the hell did you do to open up your pee hole? That Come bitch? on, man! Get a battery. Your dick hole. Oh man! Uh, that ain't supposed to open up that far. It turns out this is not the first time. Oh man, this is. This is horrible, man. I don't even go report the rest of this, man. Why would you do Boy, this, what? man? You bring it to this conversation. I talk about the witch, goddamn. It. <laughs> In the world, I just saw this and I just said, "This is just fucker." Like, why would you do this? Why? This shit ain't painful for nobody else, man. What the this, fuck this, are you talking about here, man? It, what the hell? It ain't pain. It ain't going my dick hole. <laughs> No man, dude, dude. And that's the charge of his. He got the charge of his life. He got his battery back. <laughs> he tried to fuck the energizer battery, but he tried to compete with the rose. That's what he was trying to do. He was trying to you compete try with to that fuck, rose thing. He tried to fuck the energizer battery, buddy. <laughs> it kept going and going. <laughs> Donate to the buy me a coffee or throw something in the uh in the cash out so we can get face some reefers. Cause uh mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a day. But <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I'm sorry. What the fuck? Oh god Jesus. Oh have so, a- let me go back, right? Since we went left. Bring it on back, bring it on back. Out of a biscuit eater. Matter of fact, we're going to back, go back to talking to the left or whatever. So as of tonight, sometime tonight, Joe Biden is coming in to his State of the Union address uh, as one, with one of the second lowest approval rates yet um, to talk about the highlights of the economic plans and the Russian sanctions and stuff like that. So just putting that out there because it's happening. It might have already. It's probably already passed by now. But tonight, he was he's doing that. Because he ain't did shit. Yeah, exactly. Come exactly. Ahead, and he's also he's also going. To he didn't do stay. it, Joe. I will say this. Salute to him for these crab legs, though, because they keep on going and going. Nigga got some crab legs and they got some muscles. Got some goddamn scallop. <laughs> Eating good as shit, all Joe. So thank you, Joe, for that. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need to work on this gas stuff. But anyway, um, he uh, he's also going to actually say the whereabouts of where Kamala's been hiding for the past couple of months. Um, anyway, <laughs> hiding in them single soul boots. Said it was Charlotte. He was uh, just them stopping by the them breakfast them club from time to time. <clears throat> Timberland she got from the shoe department. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rack room shoes, nigga. 
fuck out here and some mm. thin ass soul. The Mary Jack and the Mary J. Blige Levens, but not yeah, retros. Levens, ma'am. Mm. Some Ozark. Let <laughs> me stop. All right. So with that, we also have um, going back to Russia's an invasion or whatever. She had all um, <laughs> Y'all remember Lug? Mm. Birdman. <laughs> Those were the ugliest shoes I ever bought in my life. Well, I didn't buy them. They were, yeah. Oh, I ain't got nothing to do with nothing. No, my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead and speak on it. My bad. <laughs> oh, well, uh, after the past, uh, since we last talked about it, um, Russia's still been acting up. Uh, Putin is putting out nuclear threats, and um, <laughs> nobody's taking him seriously. Everybody is sanctioning him. Um, it, the man within the past couple of days, uh, the stocks have gone down, and the negatives, the the value of the ruble has cratered, losing about a quarter of its value. Uh, the Russian central bank double interest rates like 20 yeah. percent on on for real he's not suffering it's the citizens that suffer like yeah, at the care. end of the day the this. russian citizens are actually suffering but at the same time y'all voted him in so this is uh, well this you know there's y'all are going through the same thing america how, went through voting for trump that no there's some theories about how that vote went you know their their vote might have actually been rigged you know, no, that is true. Russia, this is Putin we got a talking about. And put the wrong thing in that ballot. Your ass come up missing over there. Mm-hmm. Oh, out there in some sub sub Siberian wilderness, never to be seen mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Um, um, let's see. Putin's been kicked off. Uh, the Nat, the International Judo Association, as president. Uh, <laughs> 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 Let's see. Um, they been cut off from the world banking system. <laughs> That's probably the one thing that the the one thing that probably pissed him off was him losing his judo spot. What the fuck? I can't. Oh. Do that all thing. No one will. Out of all things, my judo. Out of all the sports. Not my fucking judo. FIFA banned um, oh, Russian take- teams off of. Um, they say they they uh, FIFA they ban Russian teams off of their games. Like it, everything Russian is getting banned, basically. The shit they like, a bunch of shit that they won't get in the first place. When the last time Russia was a, a big favorite to win the World Cup? Mm. Talk about them not playing soccer no more. Them niggas play soccer on ice. Not to worry about them niggas. Ban they ass. Uh, now we talking about some sanctions. They gonna get mad about that. I, I would say Putin is an excellent. Remember what I was saying? Like Putin is showing like old school Europe and old school. Well, his half of his innate, well, majority is in Asia, but the power part is like in Europe or whatever. He's showing how these old traditional ways are just not working no more, man. You know why Putin um, is losing? <laughs> you know why Putin is losing? That's funny. <laughs> it's funny as rhymes. I'm sorry. But, but anyway, um, anyway, Putin is losing because just like old people, he don't know nothing about the internet at all. He the internet is kicking his ass. He's acting like a geriatric old man. Like, like seriously. The internet is literally social media is literally kicking. Russia's ass in a war. Along with that, the problem is though, he don't care. Mm-hmm. No, he don't care. But that's to be expected because they old people don't. Pictures of him being short, how short he is from a real angle or something like that. That's gonna really get under his skin. Like he don't care about them folks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying those starving before he give a fuck. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that before he can put out some misinformation or whatever, he he's getting countered by the internet. 
as it's soon as it comes down. So, so literally, the internet is whooping his ass, and along with that, the Ukraine. Like, you have you heard some of these uh, hilarious, like, <laughs> like let let me big up Ukraine for a little bit because they they've been at the real gangs or whatever. So, um. There was 13 Ukrainian soldiers on an island called Snake Island. First of all, it's oh, called Lord. Snake Island. <laughs> Snake oh, yeah. Island. I've heard I've heard that island. Um, they got all the world's most venomous snakes on the island. Damn. Okay. So that makes it even more gangster. So even along with that, a Russian warship comes along and uh tells them to lay down their arms uh before we open fire. And you know how they replied? Open uh, fire, yeah, they... No, the Ukrainians replied back to them, Russia, Russian warship, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Literally, that's what they <laughs> Oh, come on, Ukraine. Go fuck, you. go fuck, fuck yourself. Racism, but I can, I can respect your gangster. I can damn sure mm-hmm. do that. I like it. I'm all about that kind of, yeah, damn right. There was a, let me go, there's more, there's more, there's more. Um, there was this grandma that came up to a Russian soldier and gave him some sunflower seeds and says to him, I look forward to seeing the sunflower grow from your dead body lying in Ukrainian soil. Mm. Grandma thugged out like shit, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's I, what, yo, no, wait. But you know, them Russians, they be, and them Ukrainians, you know, them, them, them Eastern Europeans, man, they be, they be wearing them track suits and be ready to bury a nigga. Like, they, they don't mind. Yo, yo, these Ukrainians. <laughs> they they are not afraid to kill a nigga. Like, they don't give a fuck, especially when they really believe that shit. Like, the, oh, no, you would not take my home. Yo, you, these Ukrainian videos look like a rapper's Instagram. Like, these, like, they're showing guns, like, hey, they, hey, hey. like, soldier boy. <laughs> let me, like, Big let me tell up. you, let me tell you, like, this dude, there's a, there's a video of a dude who lift up a landmine while smoking a cigarette with his bare hands so he can let Ukrainian forces go through. In this video. <laughs> He, it's a landmine in his hand, and he's smoking that cigarette, just like the old man that y'all were talking about earlier. Everywhere <laughs> outside of this country, people are way more about that shit when it comes to their rights and their freedom. Like they, be like, all right, mm-hmm. we had enough. No, what you ain't gonna do is that. We done. We, oh, we got you. Mm-hmm. Oh, even Nana, yeah, Nana, Nana strapped too. We gonna all fight. We got you. And when we oh, run out I'm of bullets, not... we gonna throw the gun and the rocks at you. I ain't, I ain't finished yet. I ain't even finished. Dude walked up to his tank and stopped it. Like, put his hands out to stop it. Now, the tank, of course, could have just ran over it, but he technically <laughs> stopped it. But he went up to a tank. I'm never doing that. Now, that's With no gun. Gang- no. That's gangster, but that's kind of stupid. At least, like, face to face. No, that's... Person, you got a chance well, to well, fail, get your shot it's... off, whatever the case. But you just run up on a tank, like... Sometimes it's there's not a, a thin of... line. <laughs> there is a thin line between stupidity and bravery sometimes. Sometimes yeah, all the way I'm mm-hmm. running on a tank is if I'm stuffing a grenade into that that the nose that bit. But um, I'm gonna need uh, uh, running up on you. Shit. Shit. I'm gonna go. I, I need to be taking somebody with me. Otherwise, that's just dumb. You just gonna yeah. get smashed. I ain't running up on no goddamn machine. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. One one thing else they did is a Ukrainian road company, and they're going around taking signs off and chain and swapping signs to confuse the like Russians that come in. So. <laughs> These niggas just can't got a map, handle. Got a map of Kiev, and you get there, and they like, hold on, like this this street ain't even on our map. What is this? Exactly. Where the fuck are we at? Did we bomb the wrong? <laughs> Is this Russia? Is this <laughs> This is the wackiest Cold War I've ever seen in my life. That's crazy. These niggas is pulling out acne tricks and Looney Tunes. Exactly. Like, this is some wild. Exactly. Real. Exactly. Dude this painted a, um, a tunnel in a in, on a uh, on a right, like, on a mountain and waited for the tank to go through the. T- <laughs> I've literally seen at least twenty different Looney Tunes cartoons where the. Protagonist got away by spinning the sign around and just 
having it. Roll money. money. Mm-hmm. Both funny. <laughs> they duck season, rabbit season, the size. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? But this, this probably tops it all right here from the Ukraine. Um, Ex comedian and 2006 Ukrainian Dancing with the Stars contestant, Vladimir Zelensky, president of the Ukraine, when the when the U.S. Uh, um, basically offered to evacuate him, he says, "I don't. I need ammunition, not a ride." That's come right. On, that's come on, my nigga. That is the president of the Ukraine, ex comedian mm-hmm. and star <laughs> of the 2006 Ukrainian Dancing with the Stars contest. That's, He's that's, that's president that's it. of the Ukraine, like the Ukraine, He's, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, Ukra- the Ukrainian president was an ex comedian. And I must interject. I must interject because I've always said I wish the world leaders would get on the front lines and maybe out there ready to battle. And I can say, Mr. Voldemir, you was out there on the front lines with your people. I mm-hmm. also want to give a shout out to Vitaly and Vladimir Klitschko. I hear y'all on the front lines too. Y'all boxers. Y'all heavyweight boxers. Y'all known to be on TV pay-per-views making millions of dollars and y'all out there on the front lines for Kiev. Salute to y'all, man. Stand up for your rights. Stand up for your country, man. Do your thing. I fuck with motherfuckers who get on the front line. Y'all got, the, y'all got bread to not be there, but y'all still fighting with y'all people. I fuck with that shit. That means something. And, and you know how um I was saying it was the internet fighting um Putin also? Well, mm-hmm. Putin and you know Russian media was saying that the president, President Zelensky, wasn't there. He like evacuated or whatever. Immediately in response, and this is what I'm saying. This is like this looked like some old like rapper response video or whatever. But he came in <laughs> in the video. Good evening. Good day. The prime minister as small as here. <laughs> The party <laughs> leader is here. Oh, we the, all here, nigga. The lead, the lead of the president's administration is here. And obviously, the president's here. All of us are here. Our military are here. Our civil servants are here defending our independence and our state. And we mean to keep it that way. Glory to our allies and glory to Ukraine. Yo, Basically, man. In um, street Russia, terms, like they Takashi six nine and Ukraine is a Chicago drill rapper. Like, no, you ain't. We nigga. outside Fuck right now, nigga. We outside, mm-hmm. my nigga. We outside. <laughs> Pull up, my mm-hmm. nigga. We outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's basically what he said. That's what he said, yo. Like, Pull up, nigga. Yo. Mm-hmm. Watch I ain't even gonna lie, man. I, 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 I'm not gonna front. I like that type of energy. Mm-hmm. I like it. That, this is my thing. They do it. Expect. No one. They do it. Yeah, we out here. Putin, you gonna come out here too? Nah, he ain't gonna come out there. You put all this front with these riding these horses bare, bare chested. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just. If you this and this, you a former soldier, rejoin the troops. You won the war. You got it now. Come get it. If you, you know rejoin that, then come get it. You know what's you know what's crazy? This is where Putin fucked up. This is where the USSR and Russia fucked up anyway. They've been saying their intentions for the past 50 years since the first Cold War. Their intentions was to get all of y'all back, pretty much. So that means the Ukraine has a culture already mentally in their head that sooner or later, we're gonna have to fight y'all niggas. Cause y'all keep talking that yang gang like y'all gonna come hey, around yeah, and yeah. take over. Like, like, like they were ready. The like you can tell the way, the way they've been acting, in all these videos or whatever. They knew this was about to happen. They could. It was like you never seen one of those dudes or whatever that hit somebody. Tis I'm pretty sure you can relate to this. But you hear somebody for the first time said they want to like fight you or talk shit about you, and you be like. Nigga, I couldn't wait for you to say something. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh-huh. That's the Ukraine right now. 
like they 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 was like yo we've been waiting you we've been waiting to give you this fade for the longest time yep. or whatever and and the big misconception about russia is is like one of the biggest countries well land wise it's one of the biggest it's the biggest country in the world or whatever land wise but people wise is a lot of that land that yeah it's a lot of land that's not livable right they got more damn shit with caribou than they got damn people it's like this my russia, russia I was I was gonna say thing, Russia man. is the oh, equivalent yeah. of a, a short person with a big giant truck. Yeah, that's that's basically what talking all that shit from up Russia. in the cockpit and you hop your ass up and you get your ass out of here. This my thing. You never, 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 never hear about nobody trying to invade Africa. Well, no, they tried. It don't work too well. Oh, mm-hmm. that's why I say you don't really hear about it. Like nowadays, you know, come on, Russia, go and invade Africa. Not this one, this not not this one of the countries. Invade the continent. Go ahead. See what you got coming. Africa got them. Too. Because even though even though you think it's a bunch of separate countries, united, that motherfucker is strong. I'm getting tired. <laughs> of motherfucking bullies trying to pick on people. Because yeah. that's all Putin did. He was trying to be a bully and pick on Ukraine. Y'all smaller than us. We go to no motherfucker. In reality, mm. we're closer to the same <laughs> size. Cut up all that wilderness, motherfucker. That that takes a big chunk out of who you are out. Um, at the end of the day, he trying to do these old school tactics in a new school world. That shit ain't going to work, bro. He saw what the Talib- he saw what the Taliban did, and was like, you know what? I think I could do the same shit. No, total different situation. No, total different fine. situation. <clears throat> total different situation, bro. Total different situation. Mm-hmm. Putin, you now, you, you know gonna lose? Right, you right, face. He probably did see that invasion. And was like, yup, yeah, I'm gonna try it too. Yeah, Putin, you gonna lose, man? You gonna lose, Putin? At the end of the day. This little brief little bullshit little war you try to get 20 years from now, it'll be history in that part of the world, but it won't be world history because you're not going to have that much of a significant impact, little man. Um, Putin. To what my brother usually says, fuck Putin. Yeah. And I can't, I'm, the fade invitation is still out there too, uh, Putin. So uh, whenever you're ready, let me whip your ass and then let my son get the Putin on your face. We can do it. I know you're mad because you lost you lost your um your your judo me- membership, international judo membership and whatnot, whatever. It, it looks like you need to get back in there because you always walk walking around with them pictures with your shirt off and whatnot, looking like an old Thanksgiving turkey in the body. <clears throat> What not, but yeah, I got man, a new uh, idea for war. I got a new idea for war instead of fighting and killing people and people dying. How about you get the world leaders and they have a roasting contest? And whoever loses the roast, roasting contest lost the war. Wow, uh, uh, you know, that would be unfair if I entered that roasting contest because I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> Be a dictator. I am going to roast every human being with power in that building, and I am going to rule the world with an iron joking ass fist. We have a right to this year's world roast battle. Oh, the first person to say something, uh, yeah, yeah, some some head ass, I'm like head ass. What is that? <laughs> well, according to the social media, you lost. That's what that means. How can a head be in the ass? They are two separate things. Oh, they better not pull up Mitch McConnell. Is Mitch McConnell pull up? Duh. Yo, turkey, oh, turkey neck head in the ass. Yo, turkey neck. Yo, got that. Yo, Mr. Magoo turkey head having ass looking at. Yo. Like Yo. A, feel like a turtle shell or whatever. Like, like he could pull his whole body into the shell. That's how his foldable his neck looks. You know what I'm saying? 
But but back to my Mr. Bean comment, man. Just just I just had a real real quick thought. I believe it was a world poll who was most popular, the game or Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean gonna win. What is it with you and this Mr. Bean pick tonight? Because motherfucking Mr. Bean is more popular than the game. Shit. <laughs> I, I don't even he, he might be right about that, you know. Mr. Bean been around for what? He's very famous in mm-hmm. Europe. Mm-hmm. Good damn right. Shit. You'd be surprised how famous he is in America, too. Yeah. He's definitely mm-hmm. rough now. Like a motherfucker. But, um, yeah, once again, we're ending off the fuckery with Fuck Putin and, uh... Fuck yeah. you, Putin. Fuck you, Putin. Fuck you, Putin. Hey, Putin. 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 I say I'm gonna give Putin the even worse disrespect. I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong. Putin. Fuck you, Putin. Personally, I think his last name is disrespect to himself anyway. Because I'd be damned if my last name is Putin. <laughs> Man, that nigga name is Putin. Put in. That nigga is Vladimir Farts. That nigga is Vladimir Farts. That nigga is Vladimir Vladimir Flatulence. Put in. Put in, nigga. Flatulence. What you gonna put in? Vladimir (laughs) Flatulence. That nigga took half of Rasputin's name and then tried to be and tried to be a supervillain. Or whatever, with no money. Oh, that is what that is. Oh, mm-hmm. oh then it's fucking Rasputin. Rasputin. Mm-hmm. Rasputin, Vlad Sputin. Vlad Sputin, that bullshit. What if that shit was a messed up nickname they gave that nigga, and that ain't his real name? He just changed it to Vladimir, but they were his real name was like Vladislaw. And they just start calling them, they start saying, Vlad's Putin, Vlad's Putin. <laughs> had a ass problem in the first grade. And that just that's, that's how nicknames start. That's how names start, man. Yeah. But, uh, this nigga was think. named after a vampire and, and Rasputin. <laughs> the fuck the fuck that? Flatulinski. President Flatulinski. President shit. You shit. <laughs> Fuck that nigga, man. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good enough place to end off the good fuckery. What a good Yeah, that was some fuck. That's always a good place to make me feel happy. Um, and uh let's leave the negativity of what Putin is and go into our black business of the week. Uh, I showcased this earlier on the week. Uh, Pat has been wonderful about posting on our social media, but it is coming this week. So please, 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 if you are in the Atlanta metro area, go ahead and swing by the west side uh, in Douglasville and check out the Beautifully Crew Presents, the artist Sean Ray's Art Park Showcase. It's going down March 4th through 5th from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. on both days. It says 6719 East Strickland Street, and that's in Douglasville, Georgia. 6719 East Strickland Street, Douglasville, Georgia. Georgia. And that's Be Beautifully True presents the artist Sean Ray's Art Park Showcase. They got food, games, activities, giveaways, music, and shopping. So bring the whole family out, get you some uh, art in, let the kiddos, you know, get their art uh, expression on, maybe buy a piece or two, Get your lady some nice clothing from the boutique and, you know, make it a whole that nice little event of it, man. Get you some grub while you out there, fellowship, and, you know, just experience a nice, peaceful day with the art park. Broaden your horizons. Indeed, indeed. And, you know, you're supporting a Black-owned business, um, so that's always a beautiful <laughs> thing to do. They need our help. Because uh, without us, you know, they won't get the promotion that they need. So let's make sure we pump these types of things up. And uh, if you're in the Georgia area, like, go ahead and support, man. I know I'm definitely going to be there uh, this weekend. I'm going to take the little man up there. Um, and I, I hope to see y'all out there, Paw Squad. So, yeah, man, that's this 
weekend, March 4th and 5th, 6719 East Strickland Street, Douglasville, Georgia, the artist Sean Ray's Art Park Showcase, and that's by Be Beautifully True. You can go to BeBeautifullyTrue.com or you can go to at Be Beautifully True on Instagram and uh, check out their, their, what they do, you know? They got a whole bunch of shit going on and you need to check them out. Oh yeah, yeah. that's the Black Business of the Week, man. There we go. Indeed, man. And another Black Business of the Week that you should support. Here's your boys, the motherfucking partners, man. Support you guys. You're sitting here watching anyway. You're sitting on your couch listening to the podcast anyway. You might as well go ahead and support you guys. And there's several, yeah. several different ways that you can do that. Um, the first way, easiest way, like a video, share and subscribe, comment, on, comment, leave us a voice message on the, uh, the audio podcast. And get in touch with us, man. Have conversations with us. And Pat, how can they have conversations with us every week? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. See how I activated just went straight into it, right? That is the TikTok. That is the Instagram. That is Twitter. That is also, what am I missing? Instagram, Twitter. Twitter. I said that all wrong. Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Twitter. But anyway, we also have you on, Facebook. We on. Yep, we also have Facebook, Tiz, Face, Pat, all the partners. Huh. Indeed, indeed. And after you've taken the time, then you know <clears throat> in the easiest way possible. If you are a supporter that actually wants to go above and beyond and you want to support financially, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can go to buymeacoffee.com um, backslash the partners. And there you can not only donate for as little as a dollar, you can also become a monthly uh, member where you get exclusive member perks, exclusive access to things nobody else gets, exclusive shows just for you backstage, um, behind the edit um, access to the podcast. Uh, our Discord server becomes available to you. You get uh, exclusive uh, promo codes and exclusive access to the store. Um, so you get a bunch of just cool shit um, if you want to, and you can do that for as little as $4.99 there. Or you can always just shoot us a cash out, you know, from there you can do it for a little bit 50 cent. You know what I mean? But if you want to show your support that way, it's at the cash app. We are at dollar sign partner tiers one. That's dollar sign partner tiers one. And if you want to support financially, but you say, you know what? I like y'all. I want to support y'all, but I want to get something back for my money. I want to actually get some in my hands for my money. Face, tell them how they can do that. Well, first, you can use your handheld device or your tablet or your laptop or your desktop. Get on the internet, go to www.artreclothing.com. Or you can cut out the www and just go to artreclothing.com. That's A R T R E clothing.com. One more time for you. I'll do it a little slower. A R T R E clothing.com. The official place for all. Partners merchandise and AC83 merchandise. The only place you can get both. The only place you can get partners merchandise. The only place you can get our trade merchandise. If you see it anywhere else, it ain't real. Um, use partners code, partners promo code pod squad eight three, all caps to save money. I let us, man. Well, there we got t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeves, short sleeves, beach towels. Um, you got phone accessories, face masks, because we're still in the pandemic. If you want to wear them, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. But if you choose to, we got them. So check us out, man. Indeed, man. And if for some reason you say, hey, Tiz, I really still want to support. But you know all that shit y'all just said? I done forgot all of them sites and all of them names. Can you just give me it to me easy? Just go to thepartners.com. You can get all access to everything we just said and more. From there, and uh, you also get access to our weekly live streams. You didn't ask us, but so that's all the information you need to support the partners. Pick one of those ways, choose it, and do that thing, man. Go ahead, support your boys since you're here anyway, and keep us able to keep bringing this beautiful content to you each week. And as we are leaving out, just want to remind y'all who we are. We have been the partners, and I have been one third of those partners. Your boy Tears, and I've been along with. It's the other third of the partners, Patrick Juan. I mean, Pat Juan. And I'm along with. It's your boy face in the place, man. I think I won the race. Now I'm taking my ass to sleep. We are 
going to sleep, bitches. See y'all next week, Pod Squad. Love y'all, motherfuckers.